six game road trip for the Dodgers continues with game two against the Atlanta Braves the suddenly hot Atlanta Braves who after losing their first nine have won four in a row and the Dodgers tonight try to even the series up at a game apiece and we say welcome inside with Oral and Nomar I'm Joe Davis Alana Rizzo joins us in just a moment and Omar this team had been so good over the first couple of weeks of the season defensively came into last night with four errors on the season they committed three of them in last night alone yeah and you know the gloves are going to be there it was just one of those days that are going to happen let's not forget you got 162 games to play over a six month period it's a long season you are going to have games like this where you look sluggish where you might look sloppy where you're going to make some errors that's part of it and let's not forget and it's not an excuse but reasons why that may happen you come off playing your rival you have a long flight there's also the hour change that you're dealing with but despite this you've got to make sure that you don't let it snowball and let's take something positive they can still win the series and that's what it's all about and no matter what the reason was or it was a sluggish night and because of it now Ross Stripling takes the ball in an important spot he does you know and this guy has answered the question so far about the fifth starter he's been bigger and better than just a fifth starter it could have been a spot in the rotation that was a revolving door now the biggest debate is how many innings are they going to let him pitch because he's pitching so well he's proved he can get big league hitters out and this guy is the right guy for the job today. All right, he takes on Julio Tehran in the middle game of this three-game set with the first pitch not too far off. When we come back, Alana Rizzo takes the inside that shuffle in left field. Injuries have led to a bunch of guys getting opportunities, and many have excelled.
Sportsnet LA is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Game two between the Dodgers and Braves, ready to get going from Turner Field in Atlanta on a beautiful night for baseball with the temperatures in the mid 70s. After the Braves took the opener last night, Dodgers will try and even the series in a game of peace tonight. Here's Dave Roberts starting lineup presented by Honda. It is identical to last night's lineup with Utley Seeger and Turner at the top. Adrian Gonzalez out of the cleanup spot. Yasiel Puig continuing his great season. He hits fifth. Yasmani Grandal's the six hitter. Howie Kendrick again in left field. It's the fourth time he's done that this year. And the first four times he's done that since 2011. Jock Peterson had a couple of really nice at bats last night. He hits eighth. Ross Stripling out of the ninth spot. And Julio Teron, 25 year old out of Columbia, who's been battling a cold for the last week and then came down with a fever on Monday. So he was pushed back from last night to tonight. Well, you look at the bottom of that graphic there where he's 0-4 with a 6.08 ERA versus the Dodgers. He's actually 0-5 if you count a postseason game pitching against the Dodgers. But listen, he also has numbers good at home. Last year he was 8-2 with an ERA under three. But he come at you with some life on that fastball, a good tight slider, an occasional curveball and changeup. And the struggles so far this year have been that left handers have really dominated him. He's had trouble getting the ball in on them. He's actually gone to his change up more against lefties and that's like his third best pitch. So when he comes after you with the five left handed hitters the Dodgers are going to throw at him. He might make some mistakes out over the plate where they could hammer that left center gap. And the numbers also work in your favor if you get on him early. Closed captioning tonight is brought to you by Sideline. You can add a second number to your smartphone. Tehran coming off an outing at Washington last Thursday. Gave up six runs over seven innings. Four of those six runs came on a Bryce Harper Grand Slam. His 100th career home run. Look at this shot, guys. He literally breaks the scoreboard with it. It was his first career Grand Slam. He has since then hit another. As his monster season rolls on, a season in which he's got more home runs than he does strikeouts over the first two and a half weeks. Chase Utley ready to lead things off for the Dodgers. We get going a couple of minutes past schedule. It was one for four last night. His return to Turner Field. He said he's played more than 90 games in his career, mostly in the National League East as a member of the Phillies. So away we go with a Tehran fastball that misses down and away for ball one. Lutley out of the leadoff spot again where he has settled in. There weren't many people talking about him as a leadoff man during spring training. But with some injuries and some really nice early performances by him there, he's stuck. On the ground to first, this is Freeman feeding Tehran for the first out. Now, today's a day that the Dodgers really get into the road trip. And if they'd have won yesterday, it could be, oh, we're still playing the Braves, and this is going to be an easy series. But when the Braves kind of embarrass you and you embarrass yourself, you get right back in with some focus. And the way you kind of turn that around is if you can possibly get something going in the very first inning. Maybe put a run on the board and say, okay, we're back, guys. That's turn the page. Yesterday's over. Dodgers would like to get Corey Seeger going again. Mini slump here early on. Corey two for his last 20, but you're seeing what you're gonna see with a guy who's not even 22 years old yet. And bottom line, you're seeing what you're gonna see with anybody that plays a full season in the majors. Yeah, I think you're right on there, Joe. Nomar will test it up. When a young guy goes into slump, everybody attributes it to age. Well, you play as often as he's going to play for the Dodgers at shortstop. He's going to have maybe six or seven of these stretches during the year. The key is you want to see how they adjust and how long they last. It's not a question if you're going to have them. It's a, the question is how short do you keep them? And how do you respond? And relatively speaking over the course of a full major league season a two for 20 stretch is not something be overly concerned about. 
They're on home with a one two pitch. This is badly it evens up. Turns 22 in a few days. Out of North Carolina former first round pick of the Dodgers. Trying to reach with one away in the first inning. On the ground is short snared by Eric Ibar. Two gone. And there was a good play by Eric Ibar and that's an example where we can talk about Corey Seager and those numbers being two for twenty two. And yet you'll look at his at bat and you have a good one where he's just robbed. These are things that you're going to be seeing signs that Dave Roberts is going to be aware the coaching staff say OK is he struggling or is he squaring the ball up still hitting hard and been unlucky. And as a testament to, com to the conversation we just had about it not being a case of it being a young guy going in a slump, Justin Turner's got a similar stretch going on, and he's somebody who's been one of the best hitters in baseball over the last couple of years. Also, because it's early in the year, any kind of slump that you go through is magnified in the numbers because you don't have that full body of work to balance it. Part of the response that you look for in the young guys like Corey. That he is recognizing that he's hitting the ball hard. That yes, the numbers don't show what he's actually doing, but that he's going back to the bench and not getting overly frustrated about that hard ground out. Now the veteran might come in and say, Core, the last four out of five times up there, you've hit it hard. You just haven't got any results. Yeah, but you said, yeah, early in the year it does get magnified when you're coming up to the plate and your average is over there really big on the scoreboard. Or if you happen to peak, you're like, oh. <laughs> Compared to later in the season, you're like, all right, I'm just a slump, but you were hitting around 300 anyway. Turner at 234 right now. The key word in that st statement by Nomar, peak. Hmm. He didn't want to know numbers at all. You're right. Still doesn't. <laughs> but he hates questions when he was playing, where the reporter would come up and say, Man, you know, you're nine for your last 12. You know, you're hot. How, yeah. do you, how are you making this happen? Yeah. I always used to tell him to don't don't let me know my average. I don't don't talk numbers with me. Ask me questions. Just don't tell me numbers. I don't want to think about it. So how do you fra head. how would you want I would, to, I would to ask, frame it? Well, just say, hey, you seem to be swinging the bat really well right now. What's the <laughs> what's the secret or how are you feeling? That's different than don't have to tell me what I'm doing. And I you know, I've also told other when you want to go talk to them do that no no numbers just tell them you know they know they're swinging the bat well they just don't want to know what that number is. Good take from Turner. And the count goes full. The base is empty and a scoreless first inning game two of this three game set and of this six game road trip. Three in Atlanta three in Colorado for the Dodgers. Dodgers third baseman Justin Turner swings and misses for strike three. The Dodgers go down in order against Tehran in the first. Ross Stripling takes the ball, trying to put a stop to what has been a sluggish opening to this road trip.
Best winning streak in the majors after that 0-9 start. And that's corresponded with Nick Markakis moving into the leadoff spot as we look at the starting lineups for the Braves brought to you by Honda. Daniel Castro makes his second consecutive start behind Markakis. He was a late addition to the lineup when Adonis Garcia was scratched with a knee contusion. Freeman, Brzezinski, Johnson, then it's Ibar, Peterson, and Smith in front of the pitcher Julio Tehran. And it's a lineup that will face off with Ross Stripling tonight, making his third major league start. He's been really good over the first two. Of course, had that memorable seven and a third no hit performance in San Francisco in his debut and was sharp again against Arizona last week. Strike one to Nick Markakis. Back to back quality starts for Ross Stripling and he will join Kenta Maeda in beginning a Dodger career with three quality starts. He, they are he would be the ninth no more to do that. Well, we talked about you talked about it earlier where they're looking for that fifth starter they're talking about possibly short you know watching the innings limit on that arm because he's been doing so well well talk about it he's still for it for himself wanting to leave that impression that they still are going to consider him in that spot throughout the season you know, the most innings he threw was back you know prior to the arm surgery 127 and so it's really a good thing when people start debating on how often you can pitch and how long <laughs> that yeah. means you're doing well and they want you. Yeah the debate went from does this guy have a shot to make the big league roster to man do we have a shot to use him all year. And how do we keep him on the roster if we're going to creep up against that innings limit do we ship him to the bullpen maybe when another starter gets healthy instead of just sending him down to triple A you know this guy has proven he can get big league hitters out. Two and two on Nick Markakis. And this is down and away to run the count full. And that is something that Dave Roberts noted last night that that is an idea that they've started to toss around. And they've not even discussed internally hard limits yet, but they have floated around the idea of him moving to the bullpen to help protect that innings count. Here's a 3 2 on the ground right at Corey Seeger for the first out. And there's something, too, guys, where in this day and age front offices are not looking specifically at innings numbers you look a little deeper at that than that like high leverage innings and you know not all innings are created equal you might pitch 100 innings but if none of them are high leverage that's a lot easier than if you're in some tough spots and really digging deep often. Yeah if you get out there and there's bases loaded one out and you're pitching and the guys hitting a lot of foul balls and all of a sudden the pitch count goes up but you feel great and your mechanics are really flowing and you get out of the inning and all of a sudden it's a 26 pitch inning. The pitch count goes through the roof but you might walk into the dugout energized and feeling great and your rhythm's good and you go back out and you feel great and it's like that wasn't that high stress or high leverage to me and it comes down to the individuals a lot of times we can evaluate them from afar with numbers and situations and pitch counts but it comes down to how did it come out of my body today did it come out easy did it come out hard Castro hits it past Turner at third and is aboard with one out here in the first inning Justin had gone 24 games without an air before last night when he committed two. this one's rolled a base hit for Castro and one out base runner for Atlanta. It should be a base hit, but I guarantee you, when you have a tough game like you do yesterday, where you make a couple of errors, and then you have one like that where you know you believe you can possibly have made the play, it frustrates you. You're going, all right, you're waiting to just to make the play to just get you out of that mindset that oh, I can't catch anything right now. Freddie Freeman swings at that big curve first time he sees it. The right-hander Shripling. And this infield at Turner Field, while it is not the old infield of Fulton County Stadium where teams would refuse to take infield for fear of taking balls to the face off bat bounces, this is not the truest of infields either. You know, I was talking to some of the players about the infield, and they're saying, yeah, it's not too fun to play. It's not one of the better ones for sure. I said that it actually, the, the divots get big right away, that they don't. You know when you step on it you can see in the, that the hop inconsistent when the ball the ground ball hits the dirt. 
Do you think it was a mental break for Justin Turner to have that ball ruled a hit instead of an error? So it doesn't start to steamroll away from him? Sure felt like I, I, absolutely. It, it definitely because like I said, you have a game, nobody likes to make errors, but even playing defense is very similar to hitting where you're like, gosh, I don't feel good in the box. And I feel like I'm in a, when you feel like you're in a slump hitting, you can kind of feel that way or lack of confidence when you're out there in the field. So when you have something like that, go, okay, it's a hit. I'm okay. I can still play this game and make the plays. You tell yourself. Trying to get him to go after the high fastball, and he did. Stripling strikes out Freeman, two gone. Ross Stripling has been very good at getting the ball near the scouting report since he started up here in the big leagues. And the other thing he's been very good at is missing in his lane. He doesn't go for a fastball away and then pull it over the middle of the plate. He might be trying to throw the ball low and away, but he'll still throw it away somewhere in that lane. AJ Pruszynski now. It was drafted when Ross Stripling was four and a half years old. 22 years ago. Fouls off the first one, strike one. In the lineup for the first time in this series, it was Tyler Flowers last night who had a four hit game. Matching a career high. And Brzezinski have been platooning at that spot. Brzezinski making the start with a right hand around the mound tonight. Look at the shift that they have on Brzezinski as well, very similar to what they had on Freddie Freeman. But prior to that pitch, on the first pitch on the 0-0 count, you actually had Corey Seager almost playing like a third baseman in on the grass just to try to take away the bunt, knowing that Brzezinski would do that. Now he goes back to, I guess now your typical shortstop shift spot. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save you from it. <laughs> Castro at first with two gone and a scoreless first inning. Stripling to Brzezinski with a two on pitch. And it's three and one. AJ Brzezinski is one of those players even as the ability starts to fade organizations want him on their team. He'll continue to get jobs for as long as he wants to put the uniform on because he just brings a fire to the day that an energy that you need. Stripling walks in. First free pass of the night issued by Ross and two on with two out for Kelly Johnson. He has Monty Grandall out there to talk with Stripling. We saw Kenta Maeda have trouble in his first inning locating his fastball on Sunday and kind of found his way back to it. And here, this is kind of not typical for Ross Stripling to struggle with his command. That's Kenta back there. It's another veteran in Kelly Johnson and a huge curveball sneaks in for a strike. So we saw AJ Pruszynski who. Drafted 22 years ago, debuted in 1998. Now Kelly Johnson is in his 11th big league season. And his third stint with the Braves. They drafted him the first round. He debuted with the Braves in 2005, part of the Baby Braves. That included Jeff Francoeur, who's also come back. And he was here again last year, but was traded away at the deadline to the Mets. Finished the season with New York. The National League pennant. He came back here for his age 32 season. Guys that have tremendous ability, but seem to hop around to different organizations and never return to any of them. They kind of get a bad character rating. But guys that, as their ability fades, continue to come back to an organization. They get a very high character rating in the big leagues when an organization welcomes them back. I can think of a guy who returned to a to an old home. 
That'd be you. Huh? Well, that, I think that was more of a curtain call <laughs> than a character. But they wouldn't take it. Did they do with the character? Uh, well, there's one exception, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay, right. Yeah. Right, you're the exception. Yeah. Don't think they would have taken you if you weren't a decent dude, Oral. Yeah. I wasn't very decent on the mound that half a year. They do that fun thing. They don't call it firing you. They call it, we release you. It's kind of like a captive bird. <laughs> and you do nice little things. And I have brought it back to health, and now I release you. You're released. Yeah. Oh, that's how they you put it? You are free Is to go find another it? job. You ask a lot of guys who got released <laughs> if that's how they felt. <laughs> no, but that's what oh. the, the term should be fired. <laughs> released is like this. Mysterious word that, oh, it wasn't that bad. You just got released. <laughs> Trying to soften it for you. Yeah. It's like you were Shamu at SeaWorld and we release you back to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to go out there and fend for my own food now. Nobody wakes me up in the morning and brings me fish. If only Shamu could have <laughs> discovered poker. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Two on and two out, a scoreless first inning, and Ross Stripling to Kelly Johnson with a 2 2 pitch. Hit hard to right down the line, hooking foul. That ball down the line that just goes foul reminds me more back to Corey Seeger's slump. He hit a couple down the right field line here that just ended up foul, and this one, fortunately, when it's that far away, it's hard to hook it foul, but Kelly Johnson found a way to do it. Ross Stripling having to work in this first inning, his 25th pitch coming here. The eighth pitch of the at bat to Kelly Johnson. Castro with a one out single, he's at second. Perzinski with a two out walk, he's at first. So now the runners will get a head start. Two out in first and second. The advantage now just goes to the runner on first, where he can score on a double maybe at A.J. Brzezinski's speed. Two out, not a 3 2 count. The guy in second is probably going to score if it's a base hit anyway, because he's going on contact and on swing. You back yourself into a count where the guy in first is going to get a major jump. Second time Grandall's come out in this first inning. Ross Stripling has just looked a little bit out of sync so far. They don't seem to be on the same page right now. The rhythm with the signs and what they really want to throw. a payoff to Johnson and it's foul tipped into the mitt out of the mitt right back into it for strike three. Oh juggling a catch and a big one for Grand Dog giving the young fellow some help to get out of this first inning with a score still nothing nothing in Atlanta.
Ross Stripling this year. Now, how about this uh, play to finish last inning as we look at our Carl's Cam replay? You guys ever seen anything like this? I haven't seen it at any level of baseball in my life. Little League. Sure. Pony goal to catch a third, you goal. know, foul tip, third oh, strike like that. And the awareness, him to see it, and then that was a quick, that was quick with his hands to catch it on its way down. Ball stayed right in his peripheral vision, and he just like a cat. I mean, he's known for his pitch framing abilities. I don't know what that reputation is going to become. It's somewhat that, of that's a, a similar. That's a new stat right there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Double catches. He had somewhat of a, a similar play on a foul pop. The other day against San Francisco, right. where he caught it twice. I think he leads the majors that category. <laughs> Catching it twice. Yeah. Ball on a strike on Adrian Gonzalez, middle third of the Dodgers order in the second inning. When he made the catch against the backstop with the double catch, Adrian Gonzalez was standing over and watching him. Uh huh. Breaking ball is hit high in the air to right. Marcakis underneath it. That's four up and four down for Tehran. Do you ever have one like deflect off your glove at shortstop, Nomar, and then just barehand it out of the air and gun it to first? Uh, I, I don't recall. I don't remember. Maybe, but you did a lot I of mean, acrobatic things I've there at short, though. And you had that you had enough I've, arm to make up for that. I just had one of the strangest one was a line drive that hit off the back of our pitcher and I caught it in the air behind second on the fly on the fly and it was like and I was thinking oh, I still had to play I was like oh wait it's an out <laughs> never hit the ground. Now see how Puig attacks the first pitch deep in the hole at short eye bar. So is that a one six line out. Yep. Comes Yasmani to the plate. Off to a really good start. Since starting the season on the disabled list with a sore forearm. He says product of taking extra batting practice during the offseason to catch up, or during spring training to catch up after rehabbing for most of the offseason from the shoulder surgery and the shoulder injury that led to a rough finish to 2015. It's easy to forget how good this guy's numbers were before he injured that shoulder. He was an all-star last year. The average was up around 300 before the bad finish. It'll be interesting to hear his description of that catch after the strikeout foul tip because he's got kind of a shy personality but a dry sense of humor. So I'm sure he'll have something with a smirk that'll be funny. Iran needed just 13 pitches to retire the side in order in the first. Already two outs in the second and 0 2 on the seventh pitch of the second. Ball one. Randall goes after a high fastball and hammers it to deep right field and it's off the wall. Randall on his way to second with a double. His third of this young season and the Dodgers have their first base runner of the night. You know, starting pitcher sets the tone, but the offense can light the spark in the fire. Well, yes, Monty Grandal did a good job getting the barrel to that high pitch right there and driving that ball but yeah, you're looking for a spark you're looking for some let's not forget yesterday the Dodgers 0 for 7 runners in scoring position I know there's two outs here but we always say oral those two out RBIs how they can really get a team going yep. and that's guys what's gotten the Braves going during this four game winning streak Howie Kendrick follows the first one back. They've had 14 two out runs during the four game winning streak. They have three of them last night. Dodgers trying to get one here to start the scoring in game two. It energizes your team and it starts to break the soul of the pitcher on the mound that gives that up because he's thinking about getting in the dugout. And you get that two out RBI where he's got to go back up a base.
How he was over four last night. Struck out twice and. It was a guilty party a couple of times in those missed opportunities with men in scoring position. Waits on this 0 2 from Tehran. Brzezinski sets outside. Tehran goes there with a fastball. Kendrick protects and will do it again. Swings after one that bounces and the inning is over. Theron has finished each of the first two frames with a strikeout. The Dodgers strand a man at second in a scoreless game. Game in Atlanta after an 0 9 start. The Braves have won four in a row as we look at our Coors Light cold hard facts. It's not hard to dive into the numbers and see what's changed. The offense much better, especially with men in scoring position. And the bullpen, which was the worst in baseball over the first nine, has only given up three runs during the four game winning streak. Hot streaks and cold streaks, but I predict they're going to have more cold streaks than hot streaks with this roster. They're going to be a team that you don't want to overlook, but a team you better capitalize on when you play them. Eric Ibar leads off this inning against Ross Stripling, who misses down low, ball one. Ibar, one of those pieces that they have, one of those veteran pieces. As they tear this thing down and rebuild it. Site set on the opening of the new stadium next year. Ibar was the return for Andrelton Simmons. A lot of people wondered what in the world they would make that deal for, but the Braves got not just Ibar, but two of the top young pitching prospects in the Angels system. Pulled sharply to first, but caught by Gonzalez for the first down. Adrian is sweet down there with the glove and he's gotten a workout so far here in Atlanta and no off day on the horizon. Well yesterday he had a line drive like that that he knocked down and had to try to make a play at first base with Alex Wood covering this one he keeps it in the glove. And some rockets out there but that's what you expect from your defense playing behind you. Jace Peterson now. 
and a string of six consecutive left handed hitters that'll come up against Stripling. Started him with a curve, ground ball to Gonzalez, stays busy feeding Stripling for the second out. Start your weekend off with a bang at the Dodger game Friday, April 29th, after the Dodgers take on the Padres. Sit on the field and enjoy Friday night fireworks presented by Denny's. Go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. So Ross Stripling who had to throw 26 pitches during the first inning. He's gone the first two outs of the second on just four pitches. Malik Smith climbs in. Has four RBIs in his young big league career. Three of them came last night. There's an uneasiness as you become a big league starter. In every new ballpark, every new team you face, it kind of brings back the nerves from your first outing. And you then settle in to you know, just looking in for the target and starting to feel what the backstop feels like to you as you're coming down into the hitter at looking at that uniform in your peripheral vision and going through a new scouting report. There's just some anxiousness to it. And doesn't surprise me that he had a big tough inning the first inning but then is settling in right here. That's a base hit to right for Smith. Well, two outs and him on first. This is going to be an interesting battle between Yasmani Grandal, Ross Stripling, and trying to keep the running game down. Pitcher comes up, Julio Tehran. Yeah, you don't want your pitcher to lead off, so maybe his speed is almost being wasted yeah, in I was that gonna ask hole. That. You know, I didn't think about where we were in the batting order. Because you would really want him to run, but you don't want to have Tehran lead off. You look at Malik's speed, it's one of those where we're seeing a lot of teams where they're switching their pitcher into the eight hole and having someone like that speed batting in the ninth hole. Yeah, I could see that. If he if he sticks up here and gets on base, it would be a waste to have him even hit 250 from the eight hole. Giants are one of the teams that have done that. The Giants probably the best example of pairing speed with speed. Two true leadoff hitters at nine and one. Angel Pagan had been the leadoff man for so many years, but has flipped down to nine. As this ball's hit in the air to center, John Peterson's got it to end the inning. So Pagan went down to the ninth spot with Denard Spann's acquisition. Spann now hitting leadoff. No score after two.
Atlanta, but it's perfect right now. On to the third inning. No score between the Dodgers and Braves in game two of this three game series. Julio Tehran has given up a double to Yasmani Grandal, but that's it. 25 year old has been a full time member of the rotation since 2013 and quietly this year made his third consecutive opening day start. Back out there for his third inning of work. I've talked about Freddie Freeman as one of the cornerstones of the lineup in this rebuild. Well, they signed Tehran long term. He's through under or under control through 2019. He's kind of a staple of the rebuild of the rotation. They're hoping so. Here's Jock Peterson to lead off this inning for L.A. Jock one for three last night, but we loved his first at bat. A lot of good takes and a 10 pitch at bat that he really looked good. It's this one in the air to short left center. High bars out, caught off by Peterson. Someone on the bench right there probably yelled from the Atlanta dugout home run in the test tube. <laughs> That's a, they say 400 foot shot, 200 up and 200 yeah. down. <laughs> Cross stripling. Oh, for five in his first five big league ABs. And with those really high pop ups, scouts when they're scouting kids in high school and in college, and they don't, they know the guy might have some power, they want to judge his bat speed. Even if the guy doesn't hit a home run or get a hit, if he hits a really high pop up, they can judge his bat speed and grade his power. A couple of quick outs for Tehran in this inning, who's been efficient so far. See how the Dodgers doing the second trip through the order now. Jay Sotley grounded out to first to open the game. Talked about him being back in this ballpark for the 94th time. He's all over the all-time leaderboard for visiting players in this park. And I bet if I if I quizzed you guys on who a couple of the others would be, you would name them fairly quickly. Give you a pitch to think about it. There's strike one. Who would be some of the other guys up among the leaders all time visiting players as far as games played, hits, RBIs, etc. at Turner Field? I would think his double play partner, Jimmy Rollins, would be one. Got it. There's two others. They're in there frequently. It's off of the handle, a short left, falling down, and it's a fair ball and a base hit. Huntley with a two out single. Nice job by Castro to fire it back in and hold him to just one. Can you show a replay of that hit so I don't have to answer this trivia question at least? Thank you. So this ball right here is just sliced down the line just the right altitude and just finds grass in the outfield and usually that's good for the offensive player when the ball hits the outfield grass. Well done. How about this hit? One of the guys that's an answer to this question might have had a shot to make a play on that. David Wright nailed it. Very good, Nomar. You're really good at school. <laughs> Ryan Howard would be the other guy that's among the leaderboard. NL East guys that have been around a long time have come in this ballpark and put up good numbers. Class is dismissed. <laughs> I'm back in the broadcast. <laughs> Jump for a strike. It's one and one on Seeger. Routed out to short his first time. That's thrown away. And again, the Dodgers will have a two out RBI opportunity as Utley moves up to second. That'll be an E from the mound. They run trying to be quick over there and 
Nomar knows that he has the reputation of having a very good move and even a balk move, and I think that no, was a balk. Definitely was a balk. I was. This is what see that lean from Chase Utley. From the break of the front leg, the right? Front knee. He buckle. He bends the front knee first to get that lean, and he gets a lot of people picked off over there. And umpires don't call that, and they should. Seeger cranks one down the right field line. Does this one stay fair? No, he's done it again just outside of the right field foul pole. And the look on his face says exactly that. That gum has no chance when this ball goes foul. It's third one in two days mm -hmm. is down there by feet. This is as far as he's gotten out of the box of the three that have been close. So this one was the closest. And so now two strikes on him. Utley at second with two gone. And he takes a ball. Remember last night he just barely missed and then put it in play. Flied out about 397 feet to the wall and left center. So while the end result might not be there for him right now, seeing a lot of good signs from Corey Seager, just missing. Waits on a 2 2 from the righty, Tehran. And for me, when I thought if I pulled one foul, I really had to fight myself and say, okay, don't try to get pull happy because you know you just missed it. Like, gosh, if he makes a mistake, I can possibly keep this one fair and remind myself to possibly just stay the other way. Think about going out so I can stay on the ball. And he takes strike three on a changeup. So Tehran has finished all three innings with the K. Each of the last two with a man at second. Last couple of nights barely missing home runs down the right field line in each of the first two games of this series winds up taking strike three call to finish the top of this inning. Nick Marquez fouls off a first pitch breaking ball from Stripling strike one. Rounded out the short his first time. He's reached base in all 13 games this season. Moved up into the leadoff spot after Ender Inciarte went down in the DL with a hamstring injury. Malik Smith struggled in that spot. Braves haven't lost since. 0 oh 2.
Seeger has this one off the heel of his mitt. I think it kicked up on him again on the last bounce. No, Mar, is it a point with fielders where the the big league fields are so good that you can get a complacent thinking the hops are always going to be perfect? You definitely can. And this one, you see how his feet were. You even see that stutter step. A lot of times, too, when you're in a field that might be already in your head, we talked about how the field, you don't necessarily get the truest hops. So it's in your head, and you don't get the best read, and you start getting yourself in between. And I don't know if that necessarily even took a bad hop as compared to off the bat where you saw him kind of stutter that he just wasn't in a good position to field it. So what you're what you're battling when you're out there you're thinking about OK the hops prior to getting you the bat the hops right off the, the bat of the ball right in front of home plate that even can mess up your rhythm. So now Daniel Castro Turner's on the grass at third thinking potentially a bunt. Strike one. Some of the best shortstops in the world came from places where the fields weren't really good when they were growing up. They just always expected a bad hop and, and learn to to deal with that last second. Half a second whatever you have there. And the curveball is huge and it's 0 and 2. The benefit of the league seeing him for the first time. It'll be interesting as Ross gets to see teams a second and third time because guys will start to build a trigger I think of when to swing at that curveball what height and when's the proper time to, to get in rhythm. Of course Clayton Kershaw broke into the majors with the really good located fastball and the big curveball but a couple of years into his career teams did exactly what you're talking about and that is just kind of look at that curveball wait for a fastball he didn't have that third pitch it wasn't until he added a slider that he really took off he became one of the game's elites yeah, early on it, for Clayton it was a, a lot of tremendous ability and effective wildness and then he is now a, a completely refined pitcher where uh, he understands his lanes his execution and we'll have him tomorrow in the day game and we'll tease you with a little bit of it because he's talked about his off speed stuff is not quite where he wants it yet. Two two from Stripling to Castro. Swatted to second Utley's got it there's one Seager to first not in time. What a clean turn to get the force out. One gone. This used to be a possible crash at second base. Now it is a clean turn. Possible crash and also there are times when you see this when you know it's close. We used to say like at shortstop it'd be where kind of cheating a little bit where you kind of get an extra push off the second base. You might be coming off just a little bit sooner because you could also kind of do the playoff that neighborhood play mm -hmm. to try to get it back over to first but you can't do that anymore either. So you know they can't slide into you but you also know you have to stay and wait. Neighborhood play with the replay now being on it really doesn't exist anymore. Freddie Freeman looks at a ball. Yeah the combination of both kind of balances the books a little bit on how often the double play gets turned and how quick it can get turned. But I hope because of the new rules that second basemen and middle infielders still practice getting out of the way not to get a false sense of security thinking that well since they got a slide in the back I can't get hit there. You can't just assume that you still have to practice getting out of the way and being prepared to being hit and moving your feet. A little smoother communication between Ross Stripling and Yasmani Grandal now seem to have ironed out the pitch selection as they're going second time through the lineup and they're getting used to working with each other. Seemed to be a struggle there in that first inning. Uh, 
Nice pitch, two and two on Freeman. You got to remember that Ross really didn't pitch in many big league innings in spring training. Was optioned down March 17th. Yasmani was not always behind the plate, so they don't have a lot of reps together. Hunter at first with one away in a scoreless game in the third, and Stripling's 2 2 to Freeman. Runner takes off strike three but the runner will get second and with a shift on Corey Seager has to hustle his way to third to make sure Castro doesn't advance there. So Freeman strikes out for the second time two gone Castro into scoring position. It's a hammer right there when it starts out looking like a belt high fastball and he can drop it down in the dirt almost in front of home plate that shows you how much. He can break the ball and we all know the bad memory on this after a walk. We've got good job by Corey going over recognize there wasn't going to be a play at second immediately going over there. Chase Utley was pointing but does that just add another thing to your as a pitcher thinking about with the shift that OK I might have to possibly go cover that base as well. Yep. It would immediately be in my mind because just like it'll become a habit like when you give up a base hit to right field or center field as a man of first you got to go back up third or you got to get in between third and home and decide where I'm going to back up. I think from now on you're going to have to remember shift man on first a walk or, or a steal or a steal or a strikeout with a ball that gets away. I got to break to the right. I got to go to third. I think the one with the steal in it is one because you don't see the runner there. You just maybe hear that he's going yeah, yeah. once you hear it you got to tell yourself to sprint over to third It'll be a new habit to build another yeah. two on Brzezinski yeah, every pitcher it just becomes ingrained that any ball hit to my left I'm going over to cover first base now after about two or three steps you might see oh my second baseman got it my first base was on first you shut it down. But if you see the first baseman venturing off you will continue your run over to cover first and I think it'll start to become a habit to go the opposite direction in certain situations. Corey Seager even said you know with the more and more shifting that they're doing and everybody's doing spring training last year sure they worked on it they went over all different kinds of scenarios. But not enough not like. You know you, you've been spending your whole life as a shortstop cutting off throws to second on base hits to left or whatever it may be. It's not ingrained yet the different things within the shift especially the rarer things. Well the other thing that could happen with a, a left handed pull hitter up and a man on second and third and you're shifting the left handed pull hitter to the right side and the left handed pull hitter hits a fly ball down the left field line or close. The pitcher could actually have to be the cutoff man. The shortstop who swung all the way around might be going out to left center or out that area to get the pop up. He might then there's nobody in the infield between and you want to hold the runners. You know you want to get the ball into the infield as soon as possible and hold those runners. There is a time when the pitcher is the cutoff with bases loaded or second and third in foul territory when the balls are down the line in foul territory. Because everybody goes out to catch the pop up in a run scoring possible situation where the ball is going to be maybe fair maybe foul and everybody goes to catch it and the pitcher has to become the cutoff man. These shifts might bring more of that. Brzezinski lines one to right. Pui comes on and has to play it on a bounce. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Throw to second. Goes into center. AJ Brzezinski with a two out RBI single. The Braves have done it again with two gone and lead one nothing. It's a good pitch and jams him and then Yasiel gets a good jump on it but the ball's just not hard hit hard enough for it to get there but the arc that it took and then Yasiel having to pull up he wants to you know, show off the strong arm and maybe throw the guy out at the plate he's always trying to get the lead runner out but right there I think he'd have been more in a better position for the Dodgers to get that ball down hit the cutoff man you maybe set up the batter runner to get him out at second. That's also knowing the runner as well. You got Daniel Castro who has good speed. You saw him already trying to attempt to steal or gets a stolen base. And he's also going to have a good leader, good secondary because there's two outs. He's going on the swing. 
So all with all of those, and if you can't come up with it when it's not hard hit, it's not like he was kind of going to go halfway to see if you're going to catch it. I mean, he was going on swing exactly. on contact. So it's just, hey, get it to the cutoff, man. Don't put another man in scoring position. During this winning streak and into tonight for the Braves, 15 of their last 27 runs have been scored with two out. One and one on Kelly Johnson. That run is unearned, by the way, because this inning started with an error on Corey Seager. Johnson cranks one foul. As a defender, Nomar, when do you play those scenarios in your head? What you're going to do with the ball? Yasiel, should he be thinking two out man on second? Yeah. This ball's got to hit the cutoff man no yes. matter what. Yep. They're going on right, contact. Right, right, going before, on swing, right, right before it. Then you should be able to read the way the ball is hit, knowing that it wasn't hit that hard. Once you know the outs and you're like, okay, this ball isn't hit that hard, I don't, I don't have a chance. I know he has a great arm, but. He just loves to compete too. That no, he does. I the, mean, the emotion almost gets in the way of his brain. But there's also that maturity that comes yep. with, okay, I still do the right thing. Not try to always do the impossible thing, but do the right thing. Which he can do, the impossible thing sometimes. Well, he has been growing leaps and bounds this year mm -hmm. on the way he approaches the game, the, thing, the way he gets himself ready. I'm sure he's coaching himself on that play right now instead of somebody having to pull him aside like they would have a year or two ago. Ross Stripling already 60 pitches through two and two thirds. Brzezinski with a two out RBI single. He's at second. And a 2 2 to Johnson. He struck him out with a changeup. Fourth strikeout of the game for Ross Stripling, but the Braves on the board first on the two out base hit from Brzezinski. Up one nothing. We say hello to Alana Rizzo. All right, guys. Well, AJ Ellis figures to be back behind the plate tomorrow, catching Clayton Kershaw in the finale here in Atlanta. But it was on Monday when AJ Ellis was catching his wife Cindy. As far as the Boston Marathon was concerned, AJ Ellis took a red eye flight from Los Angeles after the Sunday night game and flew into Boston as his wife Cindy ran the Boston Marathon for the first time. She was running it for a very good cause. However, they have a friend in their uh, that 
is battling with cancer. Ryan Luz, you can see her there in the middle, battling with a very aggressive form of pediatric cancer. And AJ and Cindy Ellis were able to raise over $54,000 in the fight for pediatric cancer. And they personally donated $26,200 of their own money, $1,000 for every mile that Cindy ran in that Boston Marathon. A great day for AJ and his family. And congratulations to Cindy for finishing that marathon and also for the money that they raised. Wow, it's awesome. Great stuff, Alana. Nobody better than that guy right there, A.J. Ellis. Strike one to Justin Turner. It's just tremendous. I mean, obviously, Cindy, what she's doing, what she did to go run, but just to raise awareness as well, not only the money. So many guys like A.J., just in baseball in general, and a lot of guys just do it behind the scenes without the notoriety, but just giving back and for so many amazing causes out there. Kudos to AJ and his entire family. Justin Turner hammers one in the air to deep center. Smith is back on it at the wall to make the play. Near miss after near miss on long fly balls in this series for the Dodgers. It's a great ballpark to pitch in. Yeah, Malik Smith can cover some ground. We talked about his speed on the bases, and I mean that ball was hit. Far deep and it was well hit. He stayed with it, made that look really easy. That was not an easy play, but he got under it easy and made the catch look very easy. From a family of sprinters out of Florida. Adrian Gonzalez now. Not necessarily from a family of sprinters. <laughs> he can play though. Flight out his first time. On home with a 1 0. Fades it over the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Adrian went after an elevated fastball and foul ground at third. It's Castro for the second out. Dodgers only two base runners so far. Grandall doubled in the second, was stranded at second. Utley singled and then moved to second on an air last inning and was stranded there. Be interesting to watch Tehran as the game continues here, how deep he can go into the game, having a little touch of the flu yesterday and then saying he's fine to pitch today. Will he have the endurance? Will the pitches start to get up and start to lose his location? Puig drills one towards right center field, but Marcakis position well, runs it down in a 1 2 3 inning through the meat of the Dodgers' order. Braves up 1 0.
Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. Ross Stripling back to the hill with his team down one nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Lone run coming in a two out single from A.J. Pruszynski last inning. It was unearned. Leadoff man reached on an air on Corey Seager. Six, seven, and eight for the Braves in this fourth. That's Eric Ibar. Lined out to first his first time up. Former Angel. Swings at the first one, lines it to left. That's a base hit. Kendrick's over to cut it off. Ibar with his mind on two. Here's the throw in. Not in time. And Ibar's got a leadoff double. For a guy who hasn't played much left field, you can't play it much better than that from Howie Kendrick. Ibar's legs get this double, not the way Howie played this ball. He gets the backhand it like he's back at second base, turn and gun it like he's throwing at the first, but this time it's longer and it's the second base and almost in the nick of time. And this is Eric Ibar's speed and right out of the box. He was thinking double. You saw him run running with his head up to take a peek to see if there was a chance, and there definitely was. We talked about yesterday about some of the hitters in today's game on that 0-0 you know, zero, zero pitch, first pitch of the ball game. And Eric Ibar coming into yesterday's game ranked seventh since 2011 as far as base hits. The very first pitch with 172. Jace Peterson corners pinching for the Dodgers, protecting against a bunt. He takes ball two. How about some of the other names on that list, guys that have had success going after the first pitch? Yeah, you got a number at the top since 2011, Jose Altuve, 213, Miguel Cabrera, Robinson Cano, Freddie Freeman is fourth. All these guys hitting near 400, if not over 400, on the first pitch. Peterson with a base hit to right. It will hold Ibar at third as Puig hits the cutoff man, and they're at the corners with nobody out. So maybe there's something to it. You know, those names you're reading, those are some of the best hitters in baseball that are leading that category. Well, you see guys like Jace Peterson there. These guys just, you know, getting in early, recognizing what is what baseball the game is trying to do as far as pitchers. I mean, even you, Oral, you know, as pitchers, there's you always hear the best pitchers. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to get ahead. Yep. Trying to get ahead. The philosophy on the first pitch is about getting a strike. It's not about making your most accurate pitch. It's not about making a pitch that breaks the most. It's about uh, the most important thing is to get ahead. Right. So with that philosophy as a hitter, and I'm not saying you just free swinging. I'm just saying swinging at strikes. Just be ready to hit. That's all. That's my argument. Just be ready to hit on the first pitch. Alex Smith lays down a bunt. It's a fair ball, and they've got Ibar hung up between home and third. Grandal flips it off, and Turner makes the tag. That was a great read by Yasmani Grandal to not only get out of this squat and get to that ball, but also to take a peek and see where Ibar was on that bunt, recognizing that he, it wasn't really a squeeze it was kind of a safety squeeze where the runner at third is supposed to read the ball to see if it gets far enough away Ibar didn't read it well enough but you see him coming down and Yasmani doing a great job running him back to get that out Ibar tried to run into Yasmani there to get interference but he did it with it and he reached out with his hand you can't actually ask for the contact like that you see him right here you see him dive at him <laughs> he bagged it for the contact yeah. Big play by Osmani Grandal. The cut down a runner between home and third. First and second now with one away. And the pitcher's spot, Julio Tehran coming up against Stripling. He's up there to sacrifice as well. Corners crashing in on strike one. We talk about momentum shifts in a in a ball game. Well, they get that leadoff double by Eric Ibar. Then you get that base hit by Jace Peterson and you got an opportunity here to possibly get out of this inning with not allowing a run that would be huge. They're on dead ends this one in front of the plate. 
And Stripling will throw him out. Up to second and third go Peterson and Smith. But two away and a chance for Ross Stripling to get out of this inning that started with a double and a single, like you said, Nomar, with no damage. Right here, Ross Stripling's got first base open, so you've got Nick Markakis, who really is their, their best hitter with Freddie Freeman. You might think about pitching him tough and pitching with bases loaded two out to Castro. They're going to not even pitch to him. They're just going to put him on. And you see a big part of the reason why those numbers this year in these situations, a very small sample size, but a dominant one at that for him. And he's top five in the National League and runs batted in. So they'll put him on and take their chances with Castro. That's the difference between maybe having a youngster on the mound and a veteran that you no understands the situation is commanding the ball right here just taking the decision right away from the young man of how to pitch around somebody executing pitches under a little more pressure just saying Dave Roberts saying I'll take the blame here put him on you attack the next hitter Clayton Kershaw they would let him attack and in my mind if I'm going to attack somebody but I'm going to pitch around him but also let him maybe get himself out of my pitch Every pitch in my head was like it was an 0-2 pitch. So I've got a philosophy that no matter what the realistic count is, every pitch in my head, I'm making an 0-2 pitch, an 0-2 bounce breaking ball, an 0-2 black fastball, whatever it is. So instead of dealing with a guy who's top 20 among active players in base hits, they get a guy who's only making his third start of the season, limited big league time. Stripling starts him with that knuckle curve strike one. A potential turning point in this game if Stripling and the Dodgers can get out of it with no damage done. Double from Ibar, single from Peterson started the inning. And a man hung out between third and home to get it out. Loaded after the intentional walk. Castro late addition to the lineup tonight. He wasn't even supposed to play. They plugged him in after Adonis Garcia was a late scratch because of a knee contusion that flared up after he was hit last night. So Castro making his third start of the year. Big spot here in the fourth. Strike two. Curveball, curveball, and then a little cutter. He'll take his slider and he'll shorten the break a little bit. And cut it out there. Showing a lot of confidence that in Yasmani and his own command of his curveball with a guy on third and two outs to be able to throw it back to back to start the bat. See what he goes to on one two. Breaking ball line to center a base hit. Castro knocks in two with a two out single three nothing Atlanta. Good pitch and a good piece of hitting. Slightly up for a, a two strike curveball as you can see but that ball would end up in the dirt if it doesn't contact the bat. You saw Yasmani already moving like it was going to go in the dirt. He was getting his body in front to block that ball. Castro, good job just getting the barrel on that ball, poking it out to right field. And so that's going to do it for Ross Stripling. Braves really made him work tonight. Still wound out one pitch away from getting out of his evening with only one run in. Two on, two out, he leaves.
Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Carl's Jr. The Midnight Moonshine Burger with moonshine glaze and garlic pepper onion straws only at Carl's Jr. Ross Stripling with the first bump in the road in his big league career only goes three and two thirds tonight. He's allowed three runs and the men at first and second his responsibility. Adam Libertor will try and close the book on him here and Adam's been good since his call up last week two appearances and he's not given up anything. He has been locked in ever since he got sent down to triple A he didn't give up a run there either. Only allowed one hit down there and hasn't allowed a hit in three innings here in the big leagues. Perfect inning last night. Dodgers into the bullpen in the fourth here in game two. Freddie Freeman stands in. Strike one. So two more two out runs for the Braves. All three runs tonight coming with two outs. And over the last four plus games, 17 of their last 29 have come with two gone. Clipper toward to Freeman with an 0 1 pitch. Got in on him. Towering pop fly and foul ground that reaches the seats. We showed that graphic earlier about the Atlanta Braves on this four game winning streak. Coming into today, that 429 batting average with runners in scoring position. Oftentimes, you don't get a bat, uh, an average that high without a lot of those coming with two outs. Proved on it tonight. Nomar three for five in these situations this evening. Libertor ready for an 0 2. Randall chests it down. Number two in the majors, the Braves are with runners in scoring position this season. And trying to become the first team in Major League history to win five in a row after losing their first nine. The only teams in Major League history to lose nine in a row to start the season. And the Twins, the 15th and 16th teams to start 0 and 9, and both responded with four game winning streaks. Liberator strikes out Freeman to finish the inning. More good work from Adam Liberator in his third outing in the Bigs this year. Rough night for Ross Stripling. See if the offense can pick him up. Calendar. One more game in this series and then three at Colorado before the Dodgers return home to take on former manager Don Mattingly Marlins starting on Monday next week. Rockies off to another good start. Another year same story. 
typically get off to pretty good April starts. They lost today in Cincinnati. Now sit at eight and seven, a half game behind Dave Roberts' club in the National League West. Sometimes their pitching gets off to a good start, but I think that ballpark can wear through a pitching staff just like a big league season. But a big league season where 81 of your games are at cores, it gets wear you down. See if the Dodger offense can get going here. Yasmani Grandal and Howie Kendrick, Jock Peterson. Grandal has one of the Dodgers two hits tonight, a double in the second, off of the wall and right center. Julio Tehran has been dialed in for the most part. Left one over the plate, but they were positioned well. Kelly Johnson, one pitch and one out. Dodger fans get the best seats at the best price with an 11 game pick them plan. You can guarantee your seats to Vince Scully's final season. Lock in all of his great giveaways like the Vince Scully Avenue t shirt, the Vince Scully bobblehead. Plus, there's Vince Scully Appreciation Day. Visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans. Howie Kendrick looking for his first hit of this series. Take strike one from Tehran. What an interesting first week it's been for him. He was on the DL last Monday. He was playing second base, his natural position on Tuesday. He was in left on Wednesday. Started at third on Thursday. And finds himself playing more left field than any of those spots. First time he's played left field since 2011. Shows his versatility, but it shows you how well Chase Utley has played too. Coming out and getting the bulk of the time because of how he's injury. And then all the in injuries we've had to the outfielders where they've had to kind of look around and say who can play and who can play where. It's really impressive that both Chase and Howie have really been open to moving around to different positions. And we've Chase, say you want me at third base, you want me to play some first base wherever you want. Howie, the same thing. Obviously, we've seen him out there in left field in all those positions you mentioned. Kendrick goes the other way and that will drop in for a base hit and get by Mark Kakis. Kendrick can run for days. A man at third with one gone for the Dodgers and a nice opportunity here in the fifth. For Kakis is a fine defensive player. This one just skids by him and Atlanta Brave fans thinking about Jason Hayward who made the exodus to the Cubs. As one of the best plus minuses as a defender. This is very uncharacteristic, uh, Nick Markakis, and you just sit, you're right on that oral. That just skipped right by him. In a couple years stretch, Markakis did while he was in Baltimore without committing an error. Commits one right there, and the Dodgers are the man at third with one out, down three nothing here in the fifth. And Jack Peterson to the plate. He came off with a man at third and one out in the ninth inning on Saturday night against San Francisco. It popped out. Understandably was really frustrated about that. Followed it the next day with a home run. Let's see what he does. The similar situation here. When you have the right now you're thinking as a hitter getting a pitch that you can possibly get in the air and drive in the air. But you also reckon have to look to the infield they're playing back. So you're thinking about okay let me just get something I can drive and stay up the middle with. Because right now here we are in the top of the fifth down by three just one run is good enough. Because you start thinking about okay how many innings do I have left to maybe just get one run an inning. You don't need to have that multiple run inning. They're in that spot right now so getting Howie across home plate is critical. Two zero to Jock. Bouncing ball, base hit into center. Kendrick scores on an RBI single from Peterson, and the Dodgers on the board here in the fifth. 
Omar, he did just what you were preaching, but he got the extra part of it. Not only got the run in, but used the middle of the field and got a base hit. Stayed on this ball. I mean, we've seen, we were talking about his swings and the adjustment. Now, that's a strong swing. It's a powerful swing, but it's not a flailing to where his front shoulder's flying open, where it's almost where he's trying to lift everything. That one was something to stay on it, swing hard, but drive it. Trace Thompson to the plate in the place of Ross Stripling. Presented the tying run here in the fifth. In the middle of the plate, strike one. J.P. Howell getting loose. Thompson continues to see. A full time role, but consistent playing time, whether that's as a defensive replacement or as a starter against left handed pitching or in a situation like this. And at bat in the early innings with Ross Stripling short night. one of those that Trace is going to want back. He sees that breaking ball, saw it, and just missed it. It was hanging up there yes. for us. It's been a problem for Tehran, guys. He's given up four home runs this year. The only guy that's given up more is the former Brave, Shelby Miller. They traded away to the Diamondbacks. Our first one gone in a 3-1 game. And an 0-2 to Trace Thompson. Ball one. Hanging slider, kind of a cement mixer, and now a fastball that was supposed to be low and away and leaks up and in. Maybe Tehran is starting to fatigue a little bit from the illness he had yesterday, where he was a scratch. It's the first time in his career that he's had a start against the Dodgers go well this deep into it. Five games started, including one in the NLDS in 2013, and he's lost all five. Not just the Braves losing all five games he started, but he's taken the loss in all five of those starts. An ERA above seven. And many of the same pieces that he's seen in this Dodgers lineup. There's a lot of times where you look at a guy's career numbers against another opponent. It's not that good of a number to look at. There hasn't been a ton of turnover. The last year or so on this Dodger lineup. They're on one two. Thompson fouls it off. They run out of Columbia, former top prospect in this system. Signed in 07 when he was 16. Runner takes off on a breaking ball that's low. A throw down gets him. Peterson caught trying to steal second. And suddenly Tehran is a strike away from this inning ending. Chuck didn't get a very good jump. It looked like he was running in quicksand as the team has talked about how soft this infield is. That can slow down your base stealers too. As you go to break from first base, sometimes the dirt can break from out from under you as you play. And he does kind of take a little false step there and skid. But even if you have it, then then you you should know that you stop. You just yep. stay there. Yep. You didn't get the jump. You didn't get the jump. But I think it was just just a poor jump in general. And that was a good pitch to go on. First man that Brzezinski's thrown out this year. Now Thompson has worked the count full. There's only three stolen bases this year. That's the fewest in the National League. Line to center and a base hit. So the third hit of the inning, a pinch hit single for Trace Thompson. Doesn't that always seem the case that you get a guy <laughs> caught yeah. stealing? 
middle of that bat and the guy gets a base hit. Yeah. You're going, <laughs> you're thinking, you're thinking at home, you're thinking in the dugout, the same thing, really. I didn't have, could have just stayed on, not try to steal. And you know what happens sometimes? The guy gets thrown out stealing, and now the pitcher goes back into his windup, and that first or second pitch, he just doesn't have the rhythm of being in the windup. Just like when a guy's got a no hitter going, and now the first time you're going to get him from the stretch, and you see the game just melt down. All right. Here's Otley. Strike one. Good time for Utley to hit a home run. He hasn't had one so far this year. Or a gapper. Let's watch Trace run. Gone deep a dozen times in his career in this ballpark. Open in 97. He debuted a few years later. Was in this division for so many years. Waits on a 1 1 and had a pitch to hit and fouled it off. You flinched over here, Nomar. Because that was a hanging breaking ball right there. That he looked like he stayed back on it and just got underneath it. You see that right there, right in the middle. And you see, look at Chase, his reaction too. Thompson at first with two away. Chase Utley who said 236 home runs in his career hit number 200 in this ballpark. He could hit his first of the season this game would be tied. Inning really, but the Dodgers have made Tehran work. He hadn't thrown more than 13 pitches in an inning until here. This would be the 20th. Let's see if he tries to pick off over there. We talk about his move and that Bach move. It's doesn't really tried it, but Trace is worth trying it to see if he can get out of this inning without making this pitch. Good lead over there. Well, he takes ball three. If it's that clearly that it's a block, why isn't it called? Because umpires don't really focus on the front knee the way base runners do, base stealers do. And it's always important when you know a guy like this that whether it's the first base coach or when you get on first base as a player, the guys I know had that type of move. I try to remind the umpire, hey, look at that front knee and pay attention to it. Plays behind him now with a full count. Two gone in the fifth inning. Only one for two today with a ground out and a single. Trying to keep the line moving. Bottom third of the Dodgers order all coming up with singles against Tehran in this inning. There goes Thompson. And there goes a bouncing ball behind second. High bar will throw him out. The Dodgers get on the board. Jock Peterson with an RBI single, and it's 3 1.
innings in. He gave up six runs without recording an out in two games in San Francisco. But since then, three outings and no runs. You will be hot and cold when you come out of the bullpen. There will be streaks. And JP has been, since he's been a Dodger, really hot. He's been our most reliable piece other than Kenley Jansen. He will continue to get the ball because they trust him. At all relievers across baseball last year, minimum 40 innings pitch, but an ERA just above 1.4. Bases in the middle third of the Braves order here in the fifth. Brzezinski's reached both times and has continued some really nice production from Braves catchers in this series. Remember last night, Tyler Flowers went four for four and knocked in three. That happened twice last year, guys, from starting catchers, a four hit game. With three RBIs. Those two catchers, this guy, and the guy catching, Yasmani Grandal. One ball, one strike. And AJ Pruszynski, 39 years old, signed his second consecutive one year deal with the Braves this year. Now it is 15th full major league season. And a nice bounce back year last year after what was the worst year of his career in 2014 split between Boston and St. Louis. Brave signed him really as kind of insurance and as a backup for Christian Bethencourt who is now in San Diego. But he struggled. Brzezinski took over early on last year and stuck. Two and two. Started catching when he was eight years old. He showed up to a little league game, and the normal catcher had refused to show up. So he grabbed the gear, threw it on, liked it, and liked what came with being able to carry all the extra gear, have that big bag at that age. Not everybody had the big baseball bag at that point. It's worked out for him. Utley shovels with a glove to get him. What a play from Chase Utley. Hi. This will show you the comparison between an underhand toss and somebody running. The ball actually is moving faster. Well, I'll tell you what. I've seen Chase make this play before, but look how far he is. There's one thing to shuffle it with your glove, but from doing it from that far, that accurate to get that much behind it, that's practicing glove control as we look at the Morongo slow-mo cam. So Utley helps Howell out, and up comes Kelly Johnson. Back to back left handers out of the bullpen for the Dodgers tonight. Libertor got the final out of the fourth inning, striking out Freddie Freeman. Hands it off to Howell. Prior to Libertor's call up, the Dodgers were carrying just one left handed pitcher in that bullpen. That move had a lot to do with the fact that the Braves and the Rockies, the two teams on this road trip, are loaded up with left handed bats. You will see those moves throughout the season where Dodgers not only prepare to face a team, but they prepare to face a certain roster as parts move in and out of other teams or their regulars are in there and they happen to be predominantly one way or another they will reconfigure the bullpen. Softly hit up the line to first. Gonzalez will step on the bag and we check in with Alana Rizzo. Well, guys, it might be that way, of course, of the series when we get back to Los Angeles. Dave Roberts was saying that they haven't really discussed whether or not they're going to continue with the eight relievers in the bullpen. A lot depends also on what happens with Carl Crawford and getting some of these guys healthy again. Carl Crawford did leave today to meet the Oklahoma City Dodgers, but he had some travel issues and wasn't able to get there on the time. So the delay there as far as him coming off the disabled list and whether or not they're going to put him back on the active roster could also determine how many relievers they carry in the pen after that Colorado 
playoff series. All right, yeah, the uh, the schedule has him eligible to come off on Sunday in Colorado, but a lot of that will have to do with, like you said, the need as far as relief pitching. And how that lineup's looking at that point. Dodgers are scheduled to see only right handed starters on this road trip. Eric Ibar takes a ball. Uh, it, it's interesting when they're talking about carrying two lefties in the bullpen because of the schedule and the guy who got sent down is Austin Barnes. And I think it's really critical for an organization to constantly communicate with guys like that who might be going up and down so they're not demoralized because they're going down to triple A. And it's really not anything you did. It wasn't your performance. It was rather as we look at the schedule we're looking about that extra. You know that he is that third catcher with versatility but you look at your your roster and you're facing the teams that might have all these lefties so we want so it's it's really important to let him know why they're making those moves. Try to bunt it foul tipped it one ball and two strikes on Ibar. Speaking of triple uh, a Williams Perez he looked pretty good last night you guys say he looked all right yeah he's three days AAA rest now. not too bad and El Bencho <laughs> <laughs> that's the reward for Williams Perez who went three and a third shot out innings he's down in triple a but that's a circumstantial thing he needed a fresh arm up here. They had also just called up Ryan Weber also and he looked good yesterday too. got his first win yes. So the word is now there's a chance that on Sunday when Perez spot comes up again in the rotation. That it's not going to be Perez. Gonna go to the minor league system. Pull somebody else. 2 2 to I bar breaking ball hit over the mound testing Utley's range again. Two nice plays from Chase Utley and on the back end it's Gonzalez. One two three go the Braves a perfect inning of relief from J.P. Howe with a little help from the defense. Dodgers trying to come from behind even this series at a game apiece put your blue thumb to the test and grow your very own Justin Turner Chia pet that's a thing and it's terrifying first 40,000 fans in attendance Saturday April 30th get that Chia pet courtesy of Cedars Sinai for tickets visit Dodgers.com slash promotions if your blue thumb was on the card yeah so I said it Wow hey, Matt, yep. is you, that the first. Player Chia Pet. Hmm. I'm just 
going Could out be. there. I'm just I'm sure Twitter's going to light up and let me know. But yeah. that I'm just wondering. I mean, I mean, do you and do you and when you get the chip, do you put it next to your bobbleheads? It's a well, different just, genre. Just, just, okay, just yeah. wondering. Man, you have to get a whole new shelf. Right. You okay. Need a chia pet shelf. One that maybe has a drip system, water, make sure it grows. Right. You'd want okay. the right growing environment next, for his beard. Next to the window. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's Corey Seeger. She a pat for him just yet. There weren't a lot of giveaways in oh, the 70s. Uh -huh. but when the Afros in style, Oscar Gamble would have been right up there with the first Chia pet. His was so big it came out from under his helmet. Yeah. Surprised he could keep his helmet on. This one is for the hair and the beard. As Joe said, get your blue thumb out. Card said that I read it. Well, whatever's on the card, you don't ever like think about your career or your integrity. Hey, don't I just read it. Feeds you, the hand that I feeds just you the card. read it. Yeah. It's like Ron Burgundy. Seeger <laughs> <laughs> grounds out one away here in the sixth. Was that one of the movies that you watched as you grew up, idolizing? Thinking about being a broadcaster? Yeah, that was that was always my guy there. I wanted to be Ron Burgundy when I grew up. Stay classy, San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a movie. Here is Turner, the real version. Hammered one to center his last time was caught at the wall. So many times in this series, the Dodgers have just missed. Twice, Corey Seager down the right field line just outside of the foul pole. Turner fly that ball to center. Seager flew into center last night, just short. Zalas did the same earlier tonight. As it stands, though, only two runs in this series. They're on home with an 0 1. Inside the Turner, one ball, one strike. Well, the Dodgers last inning were able to get a run on the board after the leadoff batter got out. And I was talking about how you're just looking to just, you're at the point of the game when you're down, you're just like, okay, just get one. Here's the other one, get one. Outing from Tehran. He's under contract through 2019. Brooms a fastball for a strike, and it's two and two. Signed a six year deal after his rookie year of 2013. He was an all star in 2014, but struggled last year. It's 2 2 to Turner. Fastball banged on the ground, up the middle, and a base hit. That's normally where the shortstop is, but they were playing him to pull the ball, and Turner will gladly oblige with a single. We have names for all the positions that guys play, but sooner or later, I think we'll just call them four infielders, and where are they? It's very routine, traditional defense, but there is a new tradition. The reaction as a pitcher, I made my pitch, and it's a base hit. Yeah. What are you going to do? We're going to go to break. Tehran's night is finished with one out in the sixth. Into the Atlanta bullpen. Dodgers down two.
Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. And by Jack in the Box. Taste the baconlicious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. Freddie Gonzalez calls on the left-hander Eric O'Flaherty to come on and face the left-handed hitting Adrian Gonzalez in the numbers so far this year and his return to Atlanta where he spent 2010 through 2013. Not pretty. Required for some cash considerations in the spring training. Bounces the first one to Adrian ball one. And last year's split between Oakland and the Mets. Also a chunk of his career in Seattle. Gonzalez hitless tonight, representing the tying run for the Dodgers here in the sixth inning. One night after losing 8 1, trying to even this series at one game apiece. Adrian hammers a fly ball to deep center field. Back on it is Smith to the wall. This one is gone. And this game is tied at three. One swing of the bat and the Dodgers tie the game. One swing of the bat and Julio Tehran loses his W and gains a couple of earned runs. Will inject some life into the, the blue. We've been talking about the Dodgers throughout this series getting so close to hitting one out and finally Adrian Gonzalez gets a pitch on the inner half. And even then it was so high and you're wondering OK with the big ballpark and Malik Smith getting a jump is it going to carry out of here and it does. And that does it O'Flaherty who throws two pitches one of them bounces one of them he would have preferred to have bounce. Mile two run homer to tie the game from Adrian Gonzalez his second home run of the season team leading 10th RBI and reliving it with his buddies in the dugout brand new ball game and a brand new pitcher for the Braves Chris Withrow the former Dodger who impressed in his appearance last night hard throwing righty replacing Julio Tehran replacing Eric O'Flaherty who briefly replaced Tehran through one pitch in the dirt through one pitch that landed in the seats. Now Puig pops one foul. He had some uh, bad intentions on that first one from Withrow. And you know it's not a bad idea right after the team ties the game with a home run by Adrian Gonzalez you get a new pitcher in there you're going all right. Let's see if I can ambush him on that very first one and take a big swing. Ooh. 
Yasiel's one of those guys that has the real high average on the first pitch too. He he likes to attack the first pitch. Tonight he's grounded to short and line to right. He's one for six in this series. Pokes it off the end of the bat to first for Freeman. Two out. So the home run for the Dodgers only their ninth this season. Last April they hit 32. So ninth this year after 32 in the first month last year but the record right about identical getting it done in different ways than they did early last year. Led the National League in home runs relied on the homer more than any team in the NL. Smotty Grandall takes ball one. I like this style of offense better. It'll play better in September when you get down to the really tight games and I think it'll play better in the postseason. How about that. Last year after relying on the home run more than anybody. The second least relying on the majors this year. Doing on Grandall. The Braves. Dead last as far as their reliance on home runs. It's been the case. The last two plus seasons for Freddie Gonzalez's team. Really no pop. 2-0. That's low. Three balls and no strikes on the Osmani Grandall. Green light him right here. Three yep. out, two out. Yes. Get it right in the, you get a, in the keyhole, you let it go. You get a ball that you can drive for possible extra bases. But he took ball four instead. Grandall aboard for the second time tonight. Go ahead run reaches with two outs in the sixth and brings up Howie Kendrick. He scored the Dodgers first run singled last inning and then the ball bounced by Marcakis and right. Howie busted his way to third base. Two base error. Kendrick scored and an RBI hit from Jack Peterson. Kendrick chops it foul. He's play Chris Woodward. Over infielder. Kendrick drills this ball to center. Alex Smith back to the warning track to pull it in. Hit it right on the screws, but a little bit too low. And the inning comes to a close, but not before Adrian Gonzalez launches his second home run of the season. The tie this game at three. New life for the Dodgers as we go to the bottom of the six.
Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We treat kids better. And by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Brand new game tied at three after the Adrian Gonzalez home run as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. J.P. Howell out there for his second inning of work. One, two, three, fifth, three ground ball outs. Ross Stripling went only three and two thirds tonight. Adam Libertor got the final out of the fourth. It's been Howell since. Jace Peterson takes strike one. Bottom third of the Braves order. It'll be Smith and then the pitcher's spot against Howell. One of those important innings right here, huh, Oral? Those shut down innings. innings. JP running back out there because of the couple of lefties to lead off this inning, but I'm sure there's a right hander hard from our vantage point here with the bullpens tucked so deep in. But I'm sure there's a righty up in the Dodger bullpen. That's Hatcher. They are very nimble in the truck right there. <laughs> Bullpen's tucked away out of sight. Just about everybody in the ballpark. So well, I hope they, with the new stadium that they're building, they remember to put bullpens in there. <laughs> there are some stadiums in the league that have forgotten bullpens. Yes, they have. <laughs> San Francisco being one of them. <laughs> Scheduled to open next year, SunTrust Park, which is actually closer to downtown Marietta than it is downtown Atlanta. Way up there. Cobb County. Take a little look at it. Take a look inside of some renderings. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Your guided tour. Sun Trust Park. Looks sweet. Mm -hmm. Fact house. And working hard against Howell leading off this six. See bullpens there though? I just went. Oh, good That's point. I didn't <laughs> see him again. <laughs> it's about 20 miles from here at Turner. Way up there in the northwest suburbs. I wonder what the traffic will be like at around 2.30. I hear it's an area where it is bad. Cracked on the ground is second. Utley ranges over. He's been a busy man, but a smooth one at that. Four ground ball outs for J.P. Howell. Looked like there was a slight hesitation. He thought maybe Adrian might have gone for this ball right here. You kind of see him kind of check. And then he's like, all right, he didn't get a really good first step off of it because see how he came in on it and then he had to take a different route. I think he originally thought that Adrian might have had a beat on it. Check in with Alana. You guys were just talking about how busy Chase Utley has been and how smooth he has been tonight on the infield. Dave Roberts, after that uh, Jace Peterson ground out, just Chase said that's a huge out, and he looked at Bob Guerin, and Bob Guerin said Chase is going to need some ice tonight. <laughs> They're running all over the place. Porter's way in on Malik Smith, who shoots it on the ground to Seeger. Easy play for the second out. Stubbs will bat in the nine spot for the Braves. Dave Roberts making sure he was announced. Looks 
looks like he's going to have a little visit for a double switch. Yeah, Kike Hernandez going into left field to replace Howie Kendrick. Made the last out of the sixth inning. And Chris Hatcher coming in for the Dodgers in a 3-3 game in the sixth. Kike Hernandez into the game and left. He'll bat second next inning for the Dodgers. And Chris Hatcher comes in. Pitcher spot now seventh in the order. Hatcher trying to continue what has been some more sharp relief work from the Dodgers tonight. Get ahead. When he has been at his best, it's when he pounds the strike zone with one of the first two pitches. Falling behind 2 0, 3 0, 3 1 has not worked very well. Drew stops three for 17 and he struck out in 10 of those 17 at bats. Right hander against right hander here with Freddie Gonzalez electing not to counter the move from Dave Roberts to go to the right handed pitcher. Drew Stubbs ambush hitter dead fastball hitter. So Hatcher starts him with an off speed. Must be looking at the same scouting report. I have watched this guy hit for a long time, and a lot of those guys get in the box, and I pretend like I'm pitching to him. We're really good, weird. No Mars when he stands up and like actually acts like he's pitching and goes through the windup and everything. He's up here. It's weird, but I'm, I'm amazed he still has it. He still got it. It's still perfect form. Yeah. And Seen him in one of those Legends games going on the mound, and I'm like, it's impressive. Yeah. We'll take the rest of the inning off and let you guys just talk about me. <laughs> one and two on stuff. That's all I got. Now I'm out too. <laughs> you can come back in. Stubbs strikes out swinging and an elevated fastball from Hatcher who makes quick work of him. Seven up and seven down for the Dodger bullpen and tied as we go to the late innings.
Hunter Cervenka comes in. He's pitched now in both games in this series. Five appearances in his big league debut this year, and he's not allowed an earned run. 15 pitches yesterday, and seven of them strikes, and he looks like he can fool some hitters. Been locating the ball well, and a little deception to his delivery. He'll face Jock Peterson, then Kike Hernandez, then Chase Otley. The Dodgers trying to come from behind. Middle game of this three-game set. Second to last game they'll ever play in this ballpark. How about this? Since the Braves moved to Atlanta in 1966, the all time series between these teams here is 163 to 163. That's hard to do. Yeah. So you're saying the Dodgers need to win this one? And then the next one? It's a rubber yeah, game of the a, match. Okay. Rubber Just, game of the all time <laughs> series fun. here. <laughs> Big yeah. game. Said it was a big game before this started. I think we got her open tomorrow. There we go. Yeah. Jocks one for two. Started the scoring with an RBI single in the fifth. Looks at a sweeping breaker for strike one. Seen so many good signs from Jock Peterson lately. The way he bounced back from struggling in clutch situations Saturday with a home run Sunday. 10 pitch at bat matched the longest of his career last night finished it with a walk and then you liked his approach and his swing on that RBI single his last time yeah, because we were talking about you had a man on a third less than two outs and I was talking about not really trying to pull off and try to drive it out of the ballpark but staying up the middle with the infield back and he drove it up the middle and I'm sure Turner Ward his hitting coach has been working with him an awful lot before the season for spring and now carrying into the season. Stay back on that breaking ball, lofted it to left. Jace Peterson. You know, Jock's dad played minor league baseball with Turner Ward the year before Jock was born in Syracuse. One season together. Small world. Here's Kike. What are your Kike Hernandez is having? He's making the majority of the starts in center against left handed starters, but the Dodgers not scheduled to see one on this road trip, so most of his time is coming off of the bench. He's absolutely dominated left handed pitching. Just asked Madison Bumgarner. He took beat twice Friday night last week. Lefty Cervenka's 1 0. One ball and one strike. Talked an awful lot about Kike and what he means to this team from his versatility since he's been over here with the Dodgers. And, and he's talked about how hot his bat is, but also just so impressive that you're thinking, wow, he's kind of earned himself into a starting position yet, you know, like you talked about all the righties. And he doesn't complain. He's like, listen, whatever you need me and what you want me to do, I will do. So many of the guys we talked about on this team that are like that. We talked earlier about Howie Kendrick, about Chase Utley, but Kike Hernandez with his versatility. We talked about utility players, but he's becoming a super utility player with that offense of his. A rocket foul. How nice is that for a first year manager to have that many guys that are cool at playing wherever? Dave Roberts is inheriting the, the guy who started that momentum is Andre Ethier. He's on the DL now, but Andre Ethier was always the guy that's going to be the fourth outfielder, the fifth outfielder, and Andre went with a great attitude. Then he'd always end up rescuing the last three seasons of we need a center fielder now, we need a left fielder now. And then his bat got hot, and then he got healthy. It's just a shame he got hurt this year because he was picking up right from where he left off last year. He started 
That whole M.O. of guys saying, I'll do whatever it takes. Hernandez walks with one out. Hello, Alana. Guys, Andre Ethier was talking about the fact that he felt that his career was a little bit like Benjamin Button during the uh, ex exhibition games in Anaheim. He was talking about the fact that he, you know, took eight years in his career to become a center fielder, and then all of a sudden here he is at the tail end of his career, and he, at the time, was going to be the leadoff hitter, kind of working backwards, but reviving himself and reinventing himself all the way through. The veteran Jay Sutley comes up against Cervenka. Had run aboard now, one out of the seventh. And of course, that fractured leg on March 18th. The window that they gave for Ethier's return 10 to 14 weeks, so that would mean the end of May at the very earliest. The Dodgers hoping some time in June, realistically, to get Ethier back. So many veteran players, you know. Their skills start to diminish and they are fighting for jobs where they still have their job and they're just not willing to move and, and they don't want to be embarrassed. But all of these veterans have taken the risk to say I'll do whatever it takes even if I don't feel completely comfortable in the place and I could embarrass myself I'm going to take it for the team. Cheese one and two. I remember when Andre moved, you know, there were struggles to get Matt Kemp to move. You know, right. it was public knowledge that he didn't want to move, and it came to the point where the Dodgers were like, you can't play center field anymore, and you're hurting us, and you're saying you're a center fielder, and that's all, and they pretty much had to stand their ground and just write him in to another position. It's a fly ball to center for Malik Smith. And on. If you're the longest tenured Dodgers in his 11th season in LA, once he comes back, under contract through next year, his option for the 2018 season. Corey Seeger comes up with a go ahead run at first and two gone. It was interesting when Andre was asked, you know, about the DL, and he says, you know, when you see Father Time ticking away and you can see the end, the thing he's going to miss the most is just playing those games that are missed. It's, when you're young, it's like, I just want to get healthy. As you get older, you're like, the clock's ticking. And these are games that I'm, I cherish, and you cherish even more when you can see the end coming. Talent back during the year that yeah. they're not even going to have to trade for. Right. They said today Scott Van Slyke still back in Los Angeles working on some core exercises set to resume baseball activities sometime next week. They've got Kike taken off and will not get him. Stuck that foot in, foot in before the tag and a man in scoring position with two gone. Be a delay on the field here for Eddie Gonzalez, making sure that whoever's in charge of looking at his first replay gets a good look. And, when, and, and Kike, when he took off, obviously it was a first move, especially after them picking over there. Pitch before, trying to get over there, gone. But he also runs inside. That was smart by Kike. When you run inside, because you know there's a play to try to make it a tougher angle for the first baseman to throw to the second baseman. To the shortstop, Matt Rather, but at second base. Ooh, it's pretty close there. And he 
hasn't even decided yet if he's going to challenge. And they are going to challenge. I'm sure my, my initial reaction there is that I don't know that there's enough to overturn it. What do you guys think? From the angles that we were seeing, it's hard to overturn. Yeah. Hear what the fans think as they're playing it on the monitor here at the stadium. And they think he's out. They're biased. But they all, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they do, but. So are we. Well, you know what? I think they might have a good argument. But once again, when it's, it's borderline, it's, it's good that it's in your favor right. going into right. the headset. A couple times you've already seen this year where we thought the call was going to be overturned or upheld against the Dodgers, and it's wound up going the other way in favor of the Dodgers. It was interesting because the Braves took a long time before deciding, which, like, they were looking it over and over again to see if they were going to go challenge. So now you're probably going to get a long time over. Once they've challenged, and we've also seen where a lot that have been challenged, and when it takes a while, that they've let the place stand. And once again, that's how they determine it. Or back home, they're either looking to see if it's been confirmed as far as what was called on the field, or they reverse it, or if they say it stands, that means there wasn't enough to overturn what was ruled on the field. I'm going to go out on a limb and say my official answer is that the call stands. Probably going to be wrong. We'll no, see. You know what? I like we talked about. They're taking a while here, and from what we've seen so far, I, I think that I'm going to be Switzerland. You are? No. Yeah. Come on. It's not no gonna be, I'm not going to get involved. Tough time deciding whether that toe hit the bag before while the tag was on there. We'll see. Way to go, Joe Davis. Ah, do it Stance. again, boys. First time you stepped up this year, and you were right. You are 1 0. Oh, I'm going to go out on top. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> So this turns into an opportunity for Corey Seager to give the Dodgers their first lead of this series. Devin Seitzer. He's a fiery guy, teammate of mine. Count on Seager is 1 0. Hunter Cervenka, in his first year as a big leaguer, readies. And Seager. Takes one in the dirt that kicks by Perzinski. Go ahead, run 90 feet away. Official review time is 2 minutes 24 seconds. Always feels longer, though. Well, pitch officially. Well, it, it felt longer because it also seemed like it took the Braves another minute or so to decide whether they were going to challenge. Right. The story for the Braves during their four game winning streak has been two out runs. Can the Dodgers get one here? A 2-0. 2 and 1. The results lately have not been there for Corey, but as you've noted, the process has. It's just narrowly missed home runs on multiple occasions in this series. Continuing to hit the ball hard. Behind this one, and it's even at two and two. Dodgers one for ten with men in scoring position in this series. The two two to Corey Seager. In the air to left. And playable for Jace Peterson to bring this inning to a close. Dodgers lead Fernandez at third. Stretch time and ATL tied at three.
Top of the seventh, Dodgers relief core has been perfect so far tonight. Seven up, seven down after Ross Stripling had a rocky start, going only three and two thirds. Nick Markakis leads off the seventh for Atlanta. Then Castro, then Freeman. Chris Hatcher delivers a fastball. A bit inside, ball one. His wife Jenny gave birth to their first child last week, Jensen Thomas. And in the rarest of accomplishments, an in season birth that he was able to be there for. One and one. Well, with the new maternity leave for the players, uh -huh. the dads. Except in existence about maternity leave. I think he. It's been about three years. About three yeah. years. Two and one on Mark Kakis. He's reached twice tonight, once on an air, once was walked intentionally. That walk means that he's reached in all 14 games now for Atlanta. Hard hit right at Chase Utley. In between bounce that he gobbles up, throws out Markakis. Boy, has it been a busy night for number 26. I'm just going to go through my score. I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> you just say it's had a lot. Yeah, it's been lately, right, Oral? Six, including the. Uh, where he got an assist on the sack, sack bunt. Uh huh. So I see he's handled the ball about six times. Four times in the last two and a third. Yeah. Daniel Castro jumps on the first one, follows it back to our left, almost up into uh, the Atlanta TV booth down there. Chip Carey. What else they have in there today? I saw Joe Simpson. Anybody else? Well, directly to our left, we have the great Don Sutton. Uh -huh. Castro checks on Seeger. Two up and barely wow. two down. What a play over there Man. by Adrian Gonzalez. Wow. It's almost ho hum with him. You expect him to I make mean, those. That, I mean, especially with. The throw from Corey Seager. We talked about his arm and just staying with it. That was not an easy play. <laughs> but he makes it look like it is. First baseman like Adrian Gonzalez don't pay for a lot of dinners. <laughs> Eddie Freeman, a first baseman himself. But has struck out all three times tonight. Hatcher starts him with an off speed strike one. Either do first year Dodger announcers. So I've heard. <laughs> and experienced. Yes. And it will continue for yeah, the rest you guys of the year. Are great. It's our pleasure. You are expecting a baby also. We are. Yes. So let's go over the names. Okay. What are they? We're going with Oral Nomar Davis. <laughs> How can you not? What do you they think? Like, like, I just nice appreciate you going with Oral. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> our producer Mike Levy just said in our ear, that's the weirdest girl name I've ever heard. <laughs> not in LA. <laughs> One and two on Freeman. We're not finding out boy or girl, so. Oh, but you know you selected the names, but you guys won't even tell that. Couple for each. I would tell you, but I'd have to kill you. How do you get it down from two to to one? Here's you what I say. I, I told my wife we should wait until the baby's born, see what it looks like, and choose based on that. That's exactly the way to do it. Yeah. Wow. It's not a puppy. <laughs> Come, <on>. Come here, <laughs> Spot. <laughs> So you we disagree did, we with did, that oral? We, you know Joe, you? we did that. All right, thanks, All right. buddy. We had a couple of names in mind, and then we saw that. It the, doesn't make it right because you did it. Just, 
She said, wife doesn't agree with that. She wants to have a name picked out for a boy, a name picked out for a girl. Um, when we head to the hospital, at least by then. We don't want to wait. She said, we're going to be sleep deprived at that point. You know how sometimes you stay up late and you know, maybe when you're in college cramming for writing a paper, you wake up and you read that paper and you're like, what have I written here? We don't want to do that with a name. Cracked his bat, rolled back to Hatcher. And that is some nice relief work by the Dodgers tonight. 10 up and 10 down for Dodgers relievers. And we stay tied at three as we go to the eighth. fans Jim Johnson comes into the game tied at three in the eighth he was part of that 13 player deal between the clubs last year that sent Hector Oliveira from the Dodgers to the Braves and got the Dodgers in addition to Johnson Luis Avilan and Alex Wood but Johnson really struggled his time with L.A. had offseason surgery on core muscle problem and then re-signed with the Braves. Get three, four, and five. The meat of the Dodgers order trying to break this 3 3 tie. And this is the part of the order that tied it at three back in the sixth. Turner single, Gonzalez homer. Off of Erico Flaherty. Johnson's first pitch is swung out and missed. Strike one. Is there momentum, Nomar, when you, your last time around, you guys are the ones that produced the run, and now here you come again, and the game's tied? Yes. Especially you have, you feel like you have momentum of the way your bullpen has come in and done the job, and getting you in the dugout quick, get you back in that there to possibly take the lead and put some more runs on the board. Dodgers yet to lead in this series. 8-1 loss last night. It was eight runs that Atlanta scored a season high. Trying to even the series up and give him a chance with Kershaw on the mound tomorrow to win the series. One, two. Ball two. Now we were talking about Justin Turner and the Chia Pet. And a lot of people, I appreciate it on Twitter, were letting me know of other players. They said Coco Crisp has had one. Pablo Sandoval. Wow. Oh. Turner strikes out to begin the inning. They said Jason Worth, Brian Wilson, Bryce Harper. So there's a few. How do there. you fact check Twitter? I don't. I'm just <laughs> saying this is what the they air. told me. Uh, we've got video to fact check what Adrian Gonzalez did <laughs> in the sixth inning, a two run home run that tied the game at three. And the second pitch that Eric O'Flaherty threw. Comes up here against Jim Johnson. The 
Second home run of the year. Drove in runs nine and ten. That leads the club. Breaking ball for a strike. He's got the kind of facial hair where I think if he wanted to be a Chia Pet sensation, he could. I think he could grow quite a beard. Veterans going at it here. Johnson debuted back in 2006. He's bounced around with five different organizations over his 11 seasons in the majors. Adrian made his debut in 04. It was a short time there where he was with the Texas Rangers, 04 and 05. A lot of folks forget about that. Seems like his career began, and it did in earnest with San Diego in 2006. Behind Johnson 0 and 2. And back to back K's to begin the inning against 3 and 4 in the order for Jim Johnson. Last year, Jim Johnson, when the Dodgers had him, really just couldn't locate and really get consistent movement. When he was a Baltimore Oriole. That's sinking fastball and breaking ball. He was very accurate with. And that offseason surgery really helped him to be able to get through his pitches and locate them. He had back to back years, guys, where he led the American League in saves while he was in Baltimore. At 51 in 2012, at 50 in 2013. It has not been a closer since then. There's one Odi Asiel Puy. He had a swing and miss sinker. Uh huh. You know, a lot of all most sinker ball pitchers, you know, you're looking for your ground balls and you just want them to get hit the top of it. His move so much and the bottom dropped out of it. A lot of times he would get swing and misses. Him. It's one there. One and two. Johnson trying to strike out the side against three through five in the Dodgers order. He grounds it to short, deep in the whole eye bar, completing a one, two, three, eighth inning. We stay tight at three as we march to the bottom of the eighth. Two run home run to cap a three run rally. One in the fifth, two in the sixth, and a tie game as we go to the bottom of the eighth. You can follow the Dodgers live with the MLB.com app, bad app. If you're a baseball fan, you've got to have this. You know, the three of us are always on it. Download it. It's the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Fourth pitcher out of the bullpen for the Dodgers tonight from Libertor to Howell to Hatcher to Garcia. 
Yimi thrust into this tie game and you see the ERA at 2.70 and he's had a lot of scoreless outings where he just mowed people down. Could use another one right here. And then Dodgers get a run and Kenley Jansen time. That would be a great formula. Dodgers bullpen has not allowed a base runner tonight. Ten up and ten down. The previous three pitchers, and they try to use the shift to help keep that going against A.J. Brzezinski, who's one for two. Brzezinski corks one over second for a leadoff single. He's got to just slow the game down in his head. As Jeff Francoeur comes on to pinch run at first base. Come in from the bullpen in a tie game. You give up a base hit on the first pitch. You feel a little shell shock. Get it going. Kelly Johnson now. Veterans all over the place for this Braves team. 39 year old Brzezinski with a single 32 year old Frank Core pinch runs 32 year old Kelly Johnson steps to the plate. And looks at a fastball for ball one. 0 for three tonight he's struck out twice and grounded out. He's four for 26 on the season now. Amy would like nothing more than a ground ball to wipe things clear. Here's his 1 0. Strike one. Thinking movement. And location right here for Yimi. You don't have to worry about that extra mile an hour or two. It'll straighten the ball out or help you miss your location. Pitchman. Yep. A little off speed pitch at 85. Got some depth to it. Got him out front. Kept it on the corner. Yimi Garcia out of the Dominican Republic. Nine in 2009, debuted in 2014. Lined the ladder with a fastball that's fouled into the seats. A debut in September of 2014 for Garcia, the very first batter that he faced, Bryce Harper. Harper singled off him. Amy made his first opening day roster last year. A couple of short triple A stints. But after his second triple A stint, he was dominant down the stretch. Try to continue that momentum here into 2016. 1 2 to Kelly Johnson. Last year, he had about a three week period where he couldn't miss the glove. It was like. Unheard of and amazing, like how hard he was throwing the ball, how much it was moving, and how much he couldn't miss. Uh, he had one outing where I think he threw 12 pitches, and all of them were like 11 of the 12 were strikes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't just swing and misses, they were hitting the glove strikes. What? Big pitch here. High game with a leadoff man on on a Brzezinski single. Frank Hoare pinch running. Dave Roberts taking a look at what he's got left down in that bullpen and on his bench. 3 2. Hard hit, fly ball to right center field. Peterson is there for the first out. Johnson gave it a ride, but this ballpark gated up and one gone. Eric Ibar doubled in the fourth inning. He's also grounded out to second and lined to first. And 
this is where you have a guy who can handle the bat. He likes to bunt. You have got to play in a little bit to take away that bunt. But see if they try to even hit and run. He's one of those guys that a lot of times over there with the Angels, they would hit and run with him too. One of the best bunters in baseball during his career. Do anything he can to help the team right now. And he's got a double tonight. It's only his second hit in his last 30 at bats. So Sprank, is there something to pressing to try and impress your new team? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You you come into a new environment, especially when you've been in with another team for so long. If you come over as a free agent, there's pressing because whatever contract the new environment you want to impress, whether you get traded over there as well, the fact that they traded for you that they want to do, you want to impress. Runner takes off and on a hit and run, it's fly to center. Frank Cool will throw on the brakes and retreat to the bag. Peterson makes the catch. Frank Gore gets back. So two outs here in the eighth. Garcia, one out away from pitching around the leadoff single. You know, Nomar, when you switch organizations too and you're going through that pressing time, you don't have your same support group if you get off to a, a bad start. And oftentimes you, you will feel like you're on an island because you, know, you might may, maybe you know somebody on that team. Maybe you maybe know, maybe just know them just from playing against them, but not really close with them. So you haven't you, gone you, through you're, a slump with your new right. hitting coach. And then you're going, all right, how are they looking at me? Mm -hmm. Think about what it's like in an everyday job to go to a new job and a new place of work and then have your performance affect everybody else around you and their jobs. Yep. And then you, you, know, you feel like when you walk into work, you know, that's when you really got to have good teammates that pick you up. Right now, Yimi's hoping his teammates can pick him up right here. Especially after giving up that leadoff single. Core the pinch runner at first in a tie game in the eighth. Jace Peterson the batter. And he whips one in there, but outside, ball one. Nomar was that kind of teammate, Joe. He was the guy that jogged in from short and said, come on, get this one put in play. We got your back. I always wanted them to do that for me in the Legends game. Doesn't happen though. He's playing on the opposite team a lot. Uh, it happened once. Yeah. Once. I didn't say I got his back. I said, "Don't mess up." No. <laughs> <laughs> Find the zone, man. All right. Two and zero on Jace Peterson, one for three tonight for the former Padre farmhand. Checks his swing on strike one at 92. Came over in the Justin Upton deal prior to last season, so he had to come into a new clubhouse. The thing with his Braves team is just about everybody has come into a new clubhouse. Garcia's 2 1 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed 2 and 2. I don't know if back home you can hear kind of some booing in the stands right now. That's because the Dodger fans are being loud and, and chanting, Let's go, Dodgers. The home crowd doesn't like it, so it's good to see the Dodger fans getting into it, trying to pump up their team. Nice moves. Doesn't matter where you are, you find Dodger fans. Here's a 2 2. Caught up to a 95 mile per hour heater this time. Peterson stays alive. Former first round pick of the Padres before they traded him away for Justin Upton and a few others involved in that deal. Adding with a man at first and two gone in a tie game in the eighth. 
Amy Garcia who gave up a leadoff single trying to pitch out of it. Full count. So now Francoeur represents the go ahead run will be in motion on this 3 2. The subtlety of that count in the last pitch. Yep. Now you give up a double you probably give up a run. You get the ball in action in the 2 2 count. Same double you don't give up a run. Adrian just snuck in behind Frank Cor, made him think twice about getting too nice of a start. There he goes. And a fly ball hit to center, but Jock is there, and three fly outs to center follow the single. Let's start of the frame. Let's go to the ninth. Tied at three. After an 8 1 really slop fest last night for the Dodgers, they fell in that opener. They've rallied to tie it at three as we go to the ninth inning here in game two. Tyler Flowers comes in after A.J. Pruszynski was pinch run for. And Arotis Viscaino, who they have without saying it, basically anointed as the new closer here in Atlanta, on to try and get it to the bottom of the ninth inning. The game tied at three. Lively stuff from this guy. Last got a five out save on Friday night in Miami. And so they shut him down for the remainder of the weekend. He's coming off Tommy John surgery. And hasn't pitched since then. See if there's any rust as he goes to work against Grandall, Kendrick, and Peterson. Strike one. Should be a little easier to score on compared to Craig Kimbrell. A lot of names on this Atlanta Braves roster that are gone. Justin Upton, Jason Hayward, and Craig Kimbrell. New look until the rebuilding project is over. Say a little bit easier since last year. 37 of his 41 appearances have been scoreless. So still no easy task. Out of the Dominican Republic, 25 years old. Kind of an interesting path. He debuted with the Braves in 2011 when he was only 20 years old. And while he was rehabbing off Tommy John, they traded him to the Cubs. Then they traded him back. And the Braves acquired him twice. Two and two on Grandall. He was initially signed by the Yankees. And he came over with Melky Cabrera.
Rose to two to Grandall. Sweeps inside and the count goes full on Yasmani. Trying to reach to begin this ninth inning. Doubled in the second off of the wall. He's grounded out and he's walked. All starting this ninth inning. Got a quick turnaround for the day game tomorrow. In the dugout right now, they're saying, come on, guys, we don't get paid for playing overtime. Especially with a day game after a night game. And then traveling to Colorado. And then on the offensive side, you really battle with yourself. You're thinking, okay, I can really put us in the lead with one swing. Been doing a good job all year producing it, producing a run rather than worrying about the long ball. And how about a leadoff walk for Yasmani Grandall, his second walk of the night. The go ahead run reaches against Vizcaino to open up the ninth inning. And the local boy, Charlie Culberson, makes his first at bat in this series in the ballpark that he grew up coming to games at. He's here the year that the park opened for some Olympic games. 1997 first year the Braves played in here now in the year that the park closes makes a pinch hit appearance the go ahead run at first base in the night. Possible bunt situation here Atlanta Braves a lot of times you'll see the opposing team or even the Dodgers pick off to first base to see if the hitter gives it away. Peterson do next. Roberson swings away, strike one. An important piece for the Dodgers early on. It's one of the final men to make the 25 man roster. Part of the reason was because they were down. A middle infielder with Howie Kendrick starting the season on the DL. But even with Kendrick's return, this solid play, he's earned himself an extended stay. Ball one. That magical game in San Francisco, the one win in that four game series, the season opening road trip where he played left field, made a diving catch, and had a game winning. Double down the right field line. This guy, you know, is 1 1 pitch. It hurts an organization to have so many injuries. But the silver lining can be that if the guys that would have been in AAA all of a sudden are thrust into a situation where they have to play and they do well and then they lose their jobs. They become stronger chess pizza pieces for the front office. The Dodgers can use another double down the right field line right about now. Yeah, mm -hmm. this would be a bad time for it. And all off at first, nobody out. Ninth inning. Tries to lay off and does. We saw Jeff Francoeur pinch running last inning, by the way, and he does hold up. They say. <laughs> we saw Jeff Francoeur pinch running for uh, AJ Brzezinski last inning. When Francoeur was a rookie, Culberson was a freshman in high school here in Atlanta and got to meet him at Turner Field. Fooled on a breaking ball right down the middle for strike three. Make him get the ball down. Make him get it down. Oh no, that's not a high fastball. It's a breaking uh, ball. <laughs> so Jack Peterson, one for three. Started the scoring with an RBI single in the fifth inning. To cut into the Braves' three-nothing lead. Dodgers tied it one inning later on a two-run homer from Adrian Gonzalez.
two homers this year for Jock one in San Francisco one at home against San Francisco. Hard throwing Viscaino's 0 1. Breaking ball snapped in there for a strike and when he's throwing 96 and also snapping it off like that have fun. Well then when you reason Culberson froze on that breaking ball is your art you have to gear up for 96 you don't want to be beat that's your first thought as a hitter I don't want to be beat be late on that fastball so you're looking for that looking for that and you're thinking all right breaking balls up I'm going to give up on it because out of his hand you're thinking that's a fastball up it's a ball and it just breaks right in and the same thing with that pitch on Jock Peterson you're looking for the fastball and then it starts off as a ball and it breaks in as a strike because you give up on it. Last two men standing down in that Dodger bullpen. Jansen who did not throw last night Blanton did. Breaking ball got him. This guy, you know, filthy. Kenley up in case the Dodgers score, and Blanton up if the score stays the same. This breaking ball, if he keeps throwing this, the score will be the same. That happens to a lot of hitters when the guy is throwing this hard and has that much movement on his pitches. K. Hernandez now a two gone. Swing and a miss. Pedro Baez, by the way, still down there as well. So it's not just Blanton and Jansen. I'm Lewis Coleman, so I was way off when I said they were the only two left in the pen. Man. Oh and two. I think they've done a good job as far as mixing up the pitches, the fastball and breaking ball. You notice how they were coming at fastballs early at Yasmani and Jock Peterson, and Culberson, and then you have Kike up there, and they go breaking ball first pitch, knowing he likes that first pitch fastball. See where they go on 0 2. Breaking ball again, and it got him. Vizcaino strikes out the side after walking Grandal to begin the frame to the bottom of the ninth, tied at three. A little while still. Access Sportsnet Dodgers. Ned Coletti joins John and Jerry. And as always, Alana Rizzo has interviews and reactions in the clubhouse on Access Sportsnet Dodgers brought to you by Nissan. Hey guys, forward to sticking around to watch them when the game finishes. And Joe Blanton is out there to ensure that it doesn't finish quite yet. Uh, Joe is out there and he has pitched very well. You see the area at 1.8. 
The slider's been good, the location has been good, and the veteran status and poise out there, this situation will, will not phase him. Charlie Culberson, after pinch hitting last inning, stays in the game in left field, where he made that diving catch we mentioned. San Francisco last weekend. Two weekends ago now. Malik Smith, 8 9 and 1 for the Braves in this inning. Tyler Flowers with the catcher's spot will bat next, and then it's to the top of the order of Nick Markakis. You do not want to let this guy on, and it goes without saying any time in it, and you don't want the leadoff guy on, but especially Malik Smith in the bottom of the ninth in a tie game. This man can fly. Ball one. Ball for a strike. It's one and one. Smith one for three. Single and a couple of ground outs. Corners pitching in. Expecting his ability to bunt. And turns around a fastball. Sky high to Peterson. It's a big first out here in the ninth. The base is clear. Here's Tyler Flowers. Hopefully, got all his hits out of his system last night. He managed a career high with four of them, driving in three. So, a really nice opposite field approach from him. We know he can handle the ball away from what he showed last night. Going away, keep it down. Great ditch. Great ditch. You know you're throwing into a guy's strength or where he's been hot. You really want to concentrate on getting it to that area. And I always thought you could even make it a little below there because the guy really wants to swing. And he, his eyes kind of light up when the ball's back in that area. Even despite that, late in the game like this, you know these guys are looking also for that pitch to try to end the game. So put it in the spot so even if you miss it's over there to possibly still keep it in the ballpark. Left that one over the plate got away with it one and two. That's the cliche you, you pitch away and you show in because the mistakes in are doubles and home runs and the, the mistakes away a lot of times are just kind of singles to the opposite field. But as the guys have gotten bigger and stronger. Mistakes away the opposite field have started to turn into home runs. So it's more about keeping the ball down. Going down and away here with a slider that's poked the other way and Chase Utley off one bounce keeps his dazzling night going two away. I don't think Chase is playing them all. I think Bob, <laughs> I was going to say I think Bob yeah. Aaron was right earlier when Alana was saying he says he's going to need a lot of ice tonight. But tremendous. Defense by Chase Utley today all over the place and we talked about good job once again by flowers going the other way It was just good play over there by Utley his sixth assist it Included one that he flipped the first without transferring from his glove to his hand Land trying to work a one two three ninth inning. Here's Mark Kakis Takes that slider for a strike is 0 for 3 tonight. Was walked intentionally in the fourth inning. Showed home run power in his days in Baltimore, but hasn't hit for a ton of power here in Atlanta. Part of that is the difference in ballparks. Camden Yards, a launching pad. Marquez, in his time there, averaged about 20 home runs per season. His numbers down last year. Good numbers against Blanton in his career. Ball one. Joe can get it to the 10th. The Dodgers will bring the top of the order up. 
cranked down the right field line, but foul. You're going to come in. You better miss way in on that one and two. Little breaking ball in there, and that's that's a great place for it because all is a loud strike. Get the ball in there so that it's either a foul or a swing and miss. Two pitches are what is known as expanding the plate. Continue to walk the hitter off, especially when he's in swing mode. And get it close, kind of walk him off one side or the other. And out there with a fastball at about 90 miles an hour, there, a little off speed change up. 84. In there. Four, please, four. Dodgers bullpen has retired 15 of the 16 batters that it's faced tonight. Land trying to work a 1 2 3 ninth inning to send this one into extras. The game the Dodgers trailed 3 0 after 4. A lot of signs to get to this pitch. Went fastball away, fastball in. It looked like he went slider down and in. I don't know what they're going to settle on. Fastball away. Change, up, Change away. up away, and he walked him. So the potential winning run reaches with two gone. And brings up Daniel Castro. Two for four tonight at his first two RBIs of the season in the fourth inning. Two out single. Arcakis, pretty good speed at first. Zalas holds him. And all sets outside. The fastball just barely misses. Ball one. That was a pretty good pitch right there by Joe Blanton. Looked like he possibly painted the corner. Didn't get the call. It's in there one and one. Have to deal with Castro because if he reaches, then Freddie Freeman comes up. The pitch selection to Marquecas was the risk reward to get to Castro, get the home run hitter that's a lefty, let him stand over there or get himself out. But you do when you do that, bring Freeman into the equation. Going away. Fastball swung on and missed. One and two. Not wanting to throw the slider that rejuvenated his career because it speeds up the bat of Castro. It's probably the only pitch he really could hit a home run on. Especially if he corkscrewed it. So he's staying hard away right here and using the big part of the field to get him out. See what he goes to 1 2. Going away again. Went to the slider and it's fouled off. Once you get ahead and know that you can throw it on the edge of the plate or bounce it, now your shotgun, your range of where you're sending the pitch is to a less risky area. But to just say I'm going to use the slider to build the count and to get strikes and have to throw it for strikes and now your strike ends up being a hanger. That's where the risk is for that pitch. Bounce it. The one two. Fastball hit in the air to right. we started on. Now goes back and makes the play. Pretty casual over there on that fly ball. It started to drift towards the corner. On to extra innings, tied at three.
Now these guys will go at it. Clayton Kershaw, Matt Whistler in the series finale at 12.05 Eastern time. That's breakfast in L.A. Dodgers baseball the finale against Atlanta. Clayton Kershaw hopes that it'll be an opportunity to win this series. First though Dodgers trying to win this game to make that possible. Jason Grilly comes in. He was the closer last year before suffering an Achilles injury. And he's taking a back seat to Vizcaino. We got to see why that was with as filthy as Vizcaino stuff is. But really a veteran that still has something left in the tank. Although those numbers early on not great. Dave Roberts. With infectious energy. Smile on his face, seeing Chase Utley going up there, top of the order, leading off here in the tenth. It's been a spectacular night defensively for Chase. One for four at the plate. This is where you're the Dodgers. You're going. Here's the top of a lineup. This is where we have to score. You got to pick up the bullpen. They've done a tremendous job to get them to this point. It's two and all. Let's check in with Alana Rizzo down in the field. I tell you what, if this is a clubhouse or a dugout that is tense, you would never know it. Dave Roberts has been screaming the entire time, saying, "Come on, Chase, get the base. Let's get all these guys up here." And then. He was uh, just singing Justin Bieber sorry before uh, Jason Grilly came out. This wow. is a this is a loose dugout and of course Jason Grilly on the hill and Adrian Gonzalez is like you know what I'm hungry I could use a grilled cheese which is Jason Grilly's nickname. I like it. It's great access. Great work Alana. Two and one on Utley. It's high game in the tenth. Both teams have played two extra innings games this season both split. Dodgers back to back games in San Francisco. Braves lost in 10 innings on opening day, one in 10 innings Sunday in Miami. Three balls and a strike on Chase Utley starting off this 10th inning. This is where you tell yourself one pitch, you're looking for one pitch that you're really key holding, and it has to be there that you let it fly. See what he gets. On 3 1. Painted 3 and 2. Seeger and Turner to follow in this inning. Dodgers still looking for that first lead of the series. Here comes the payoff. Only foul tips it to stay alive. A lot of respect right there for Chase Utley's ability to hit a fastball in 3 2 count, tie game, extra innings, going to the breaking ball. Confidence from Grilly and then respect to Utley. Six time All Star Chase Utley. Lines a base hit to right to start the tenth. Utley rounds and holds. Go ahead, run is on board to lead off this tenth inning. Three one fastball on the black that Chase spit on and took for a strike. Fouled off a three two breaking ball and then a mistake. A fastball right down the middle missed his target by a whole glove. And took that fastball and ripped it. Watch his turn. Watch yeah. how hard he is thinking if there's any bobble out there he is taking the extra base. And he wasn't breaking it down until the play was over. And now Corey Seager. This wouldn't be a bad time for him to straighten one out. He's barely missing home runs on a couple of occasions in this series. Utley runs on a pitch in the dirt and he steals it easily. Big time jump from Chase Utley. We talked about the energy Chase Utley brought to the Dodgers last year going down the stretch the playoff run. 
but signing him again this year. The energy he brings, recognizing what it takes. We talked about, you were even talking about yesterday about young guys, with veteran guys, teaching them how to win. Well, it's moments like this, leading off the inning, getting that base hit, looking for the extra base, and then stealing it. And he went on first move right there. That was strictly scouting and savvy. So the Dodgers are the man at second and nobody out in the tenth inning of a tie game. Ball two to Seager. Flowers out to talk with Grilly. And we talked about Corey Seager. <laughs> Said he, oh, he's been struggling coming in, but you know, that's a question of how you want to describe him struggling, still hitting the ball hard. But even if he's feeling that way, this can help him because now you're going, okay, now I can hone in on a pitch I need. My job is to move him over. Even if it's not a base hit, I'm doing something productive right now to move this guy over. That's the way you got to think, and it changes your approach if you've been pressing before this at bat. Remember on Saturday night in the ninth inning, down by a run, the Dodgers got the leadoff man on second, could not score him. Another opportunity and a tie game this time. Seven year old Utley at second, 21 year old Seeger at the plate. Grilly's 2 0 pitch. Sweeps around the plate. It's 3 0. Well, Grilly's thinking Justin Turner's on deck. I could set up a double play. I don't think they'll bunt Turner. So, would I rather have Seeger hit a ground ball to the right side and have a man on third and have to face Turner? Or do I let him stand over there at first? And I'll pitch with first and second no out. Walked him on four pitches. So two on with nobody out for Justin Turner. And Freddie Gonzalez, a shot of him on the bench over there. He knows he's got a veteran pitcher on the mound. And he knows he didn't lose his release point there. He knows that was a, a veteran that was just trying to pick the situation that he wanted to pitch to. Roger McDowell out to talk to him. Braves started the scoring in this game with one in the third. They got two more in the fourth. Three of those runs against Ross Stripling. All three of those runs against Ross Stripling. Bullpen is retired 17 of the 18 that it's faced. Dodgers getting one in the fifth and two in the sixth, and a chance here to jump in front in the tenth with their three hitter Justin Turner coming up. I would not expect Justin Turner to be bunting because then you lose Adrian Gonzalez's bat at bat. If they walk him and they face Puig with the bases loaded and one out. Turner is one for four. Really is ready. Flowers setting outside. Fastball, strike one. The two best RBI guys on the team up at the plate and in the on deck circle. Justin had a career high and runs batted in last year. Another great season. Not been many hitters in baseball that have put up as good at numbers as Justin Turner has since he joined the Dodgers two seasons ago. Utley at second, Seeger at first, nobody out in the tenth. And an 0-1 to Justin Turner. Huge pitch right here. If it's a strike, Grilly will be able to keep the ball down and turn Justin Turner into a double play candidate. If it's a ball and he's got to get back in the count, and he's going to have to bring the ball up, and Justin's going to be looking for a good solid strike to hit. Zotley dive into the bag. 
started this inning with a single, stole second. Seeger then walked on four pitches. Dodgers three hitter Justin Turner awaits this big 1 1 pitch. It's a ball and it's 2 1 1. Totally swings the at bat. He does not want to walk Justin. He would much rather try and throw Justin some strikes and get him out than pitch him tough and have to face that man right there with the bases loaded. Turner expecting to get something to hit here. 2 1. Fastball hit in the air to left center field. Smith went back at first, comes on, can't get it. It kicks away. Utley rounding third. Here's the throw towards the plate, up the line, and the Dodgers take the lead. Malik Smith misread it in center, and Chase Utley scores the go ahead run. That ball was hit. You have Chase Utley. That ball gets in a little bit on Justin Turner, but Utley goes back right away, recognizing, okay, they might have a play. Maybe it's a tag. And then fortunate for the Dodgers, as Malik Smith makes a tremendous effort, it gets away from him. Utley's not sure he's tagging up, but Chris Woodward recognizing it and sending Utley all the way. They rule it a straight double for Justin Turner, so an RBI to put the Dodgers in front 4 3. And a chance for more as they'll walk Gonzalez intentionally. And the let's go Dodgers chance rain down on Turner Field in Atlanta. And so Kenley Jansen can start to get loose. And with Yasiel Puig on deck, this is one where you try to control your emotions. You're going, okay, you get angry because they're walking the guy in front of you to pitch to you. And then at the same time, you got to say, well, it's still bases loaded, man on third, nobody out. I got to stay within myself to make sure I can get a pitch that I can still drive in the air. Take this inning all the way back to the beginning. A 3 1 fastball that he takes for a ball. Falls off a 3 2 curveball, gets the base hit on the mistake fastball, steals second, and forces Grilly into a situation where what am I going to do with Seeger now that I've fallen behind 2 0? Oh? And here comes the inning. He is definitely going to need some ice after the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but wasn't a sure thing before after this last trip around. And the argument could be made that this game would not be an extras if it wasn't for his defense tonight. Gasiel Puig, a chance to bust it open. Had that on his mind, chased one, strike one. My argument is this would not be in the extra innings if it wasn't for the bullpen right now, too. Mm -hmm. The bullpen has been tremendous so far. One earned run over the last 23 and a third innings for the Dodgers pen. Look at that. Those guys like each other at all. He fouls it off. He's twice chased and down 0 and 2. You get the run to take the lead, but we saw in San Francisco that Major League Baseball no lead is safe, and especially a one run lead far from comfortable, even if you have Kenley Jansen. Really, he's gone back to back breaking balls to start Puig on this 0 2. Went fastball and blew it by him. Not Puig's finest moment. One out in the tenth. The base is loaded, no out. When you have an opportunity, you can score a couple runs just with productive outs. That was a tough at bat for Yasiel. Freddie Gonzalez coming out. Jason Grilly on the hook at this point. Back into that Braves bullpen with the Osmani Grandal coming to the plate. Dodgers have taken their first lead of this series.
LA up 4 3, top of the 10th inning. He's on to face Yasmani Grandal. Charlie Culberson would come up next. Dodgers trying to add on to this 4 0 or this 4 3 advantage. They take on the RBI double from Justin Turner. Seeger's at third, Turner's at second. And after the intentional walk, Gonzalez is at first. Gondo's first pitch to Yasmani Grandal. Down the middle with a fastball, strike one. Seven three lever tonight. Freddy Gonzalez is used. It's on the night where his starter went into the sixth. Nine man bullpen. Hard hit, right side, base hit. There's the insurance. Grandall with an RBI single. Station to station they go, and it's 5 3 Dodgers. Well, the double by Justin Turner and this base hit by Yasmani, they find the right spots and get the Dodgers another tally. Move them up 90 feet, and the one crossing the plate. That one insurance was nice, but I think this one would really be good because it just changes the mentality of your closer coming in the game. Infield comes in against Charlie Culberson, squares around and takes a ball. A squeeze play was on, and they've got Turner hung up. Castro tags him out, and the other runners advance. So with Culberson bringing that bat back. This is what a safety squeeze. This wasn't just a straight squeeze and Justin's took off too far thinking he was going to go after that and lay it down. We've seen it where we've seen the Dodgers do this before they talked about it where the safety squeeze is you have to wait till the bunt is actually down. He didn't really just break hard. He actually kind of was kind of going anticipating he was going to bunt and when Culberson pulled it back he left himself high and dry. So now Charlie can swing away and he's up in the count one and all. It's Alexio Gondo. Charlie Culberson who grew up in nearby Rome Georgia as a Braves fan once got Chipper Jones autograph in this ballpark. A lot of friends and family in town. Wife and two kids live here. Gonzalez at third with Grandal at second. And a 2 0. Holderson shoots it foul, strike one. I'm not sure if that's a safety squeeze or not, only because it was bases loaded. You know, and I understand what you're reading, and I'm reading the same thing because with bases loaded, it's so hard to safety squeeze because you have a force play at home. For sure. But at, but I'm going, he, usually you're not pulling that back. You know, know that that's you got to I mean. get it I'm down. I'm thinking, did, yeah, what did Charlie just flinch, maybe? Mess up us and mess up Justin Turner. <laughs> High fly ball to center. Malik Smith under this one. And that's the inning. Fasten those seat belts out of the bottom of the 10th inning. Kenley Jansen comes in to try and close out an extra innings win.
Kenley Jansen tied for the National League lead with five saves this season and in five and two thirds innings work two base runners this year. His cutter has been outstanding but he's also had the secondary stuff working where he's got the hitters now guessing in some ways what is he going to throw what side of the plate with the cutter and will he throw the slider to me and he started to show the league from the second half of last year that the slider is now a pitch he has confidence in and he will go to. He gets three four and five so he'll have to earn it Freddie Freeman. Adonis Garcia has grabbed the bat will bat next and then Kelly Johnson do up third in the inning. Overshift on for Freeman who is 0 for 4. It sure is nice facing this guy to lead off the inning with a two run lead as opposed to just getting one in the top of this inning. Kenley Jansen starts the inning with a strike. One home run this year came on his first swing of the year against Max Scherzer. Strike two. Second in Dodgers history and saves 147. Sets for an 0-2 pitch to Freddie Freeman. Look down at his hand after he let that one go. It's his slider right there, but he was making sure with an 0-2 count to a hitter that he respects that he wasn't going to make a mistake with it. I'd rather miss two feet low than two feet high. Freeman with hits in both of his ABs against Jansen Lifetime, including a double. But down in the count here, one and two. Down the left field line, and it will get out of play. We'll do it again. Kenley trying to get the ball inside under Freddie's hands and has yet to be able to get it in there. Osmani has called it three times out of four pitches and when he got the two called strikes they're supposed to be cutters in they ended up on the outer half and there with an 0 2 cutter there he just didn't get it in there still not getting it in there you no. see it leaking back over the plate as a hitter can you tell that that he's missing that badly no not really only only times is if you see kind of the like as you follow the pitch all the way in and you can see the yeah. the catcher reaching for it. Uh, one and two. Located at this time one gone. Well he wanted it away and that one was almost like it looked like it backed up. Yeah. On the cutter where it almost had more tailing action than it did cut in action. But I also wonder if uh, Freddie Freeman might have fouled that ball a little bit. And once again, Yasmani able to hold on to it. You know, because the lighting here is only comes from the home plate side. See the shadows of the umpire and Yasmani. These are this is a type of ballpark that I used to worry about with my catcher moving too early. We talked about how do you know he's missing or not. Mm. So there's no lights in the outfield here at this ballpark. So there is shadows then. So I would always have my catchers not move until the, I was almost coming into foot strike. Garcia fouls it off. Jansen ahead of him 0 and 2. Because as a hitter, you can see, see that movement shadows. in the, your peripheral. Yep. And, and there's, there's even some hitters who really try to peek and see if they can see the movement, but that's even it's even easier with the shadows. And if they are peakers, if we know that from watching and seeing how they approach and their veterans, you can do the reverse shift on them. Say, I'll, I'll give you my shadow for a couple pitches, but once I get ahead or I need to get you out in a key situation, 
I used to talk to Mike Sosha. I used to talk to some other my other catchers and say, okay, let's we got to sign for a reverse shift. So he goes sit underneath him, even though I'm going to break the ball away. Second level thinking, quick, get it out there. Yep. Braves hitters one for 18 against the Dodgers bullpen tonight. Two balls and two strikes. And we tried to quick pitch him right there. With nobody on, that is not a balk. It's just considered a windup. Doesn't have to come set. Jonas Garcia pinch hitting here in the tenth inning. He's run the cow full. He can reach. Then Kelly Johnson would come up representing the tying run for Atlanta. And that's exactly the reason we were talking about that last inning. We're um, obviously get the the act the insurance run, but to get two insurance runs, you can afford to get a guy on base. Bouncing ball to Seeger at short. Two gone. This is a big win for the Dodgers. Coming in here and losing eight to one to the Atlanta Braves. Coming into a road trip where you really want to gain some ground on some people, then going to Colorado, who just happens to be tied for first or near first with you. And now Clayton Kershaw going tomorrow in about 12 hours. A little momentum to be built. Getting this last out. Exactly 12 hours from now, right? 13 hours from now. 12.05 Eastern. Kelly Johnson, last hope for the Braves. Kelly Jansen gets him to bounce one into the shift, and Corey Seeger puts an end to it. Dodgers score the game's final five runs and win it in 10 5 3. They trailed 3 0 after four. They got one in the fifth, tied it in the sixth on a two run shot from Gonzalez. And they got two in the tenth to win it. Time for our Lexus player of the game. It's Chase 